See, some of my followers have hit my wife up for her feet before. Oh. Like, I don't know, 10 grand to make 6,000. Louis Fisk? I need <laughs> my second ever deal was 150,000. Wholesale. Wholesale, yeah. Shut the thousand, Which I probably end up spending. I don't shuffle that. Frank said it because it, it's loud, okay? Yo, everybody, welcome back to the Mid 20s podcast with your host, Jesse Regarin, mm. Lewis Fisk, and a very, very special guest today, Trevor Ahing at Invest with Trev on Instagram and TikTok. Um, Trevor, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. And YouTube. I'm trying to grow the YouTube, man. Invest oh. with Trev on YouTube as well. There you go. Go hit it up, like, and subscribe. Follow him on socials. You'll get an absolute ton of value. Thank you. Um, being for real. Hell yeah. I go there to learn all the time. Every time I hear you on Zooms and everything, I learn something. So I appreciate sure. that, man. I was talking to my wife, actually, and she was like, are you even allowed on this, bitch? Because I'm I just turned 30. And I'm like, I don't even rate, <laughs> man. I don't even rate. But I'm with the cool kids, so I'm, I was stoked. Hell yeah. I appreciate Should it. Be Thank you guys for having 20 me. 20 at heart, and you qualify. Yeah, dude. I, I feel like I'm 70 at heart with a new girl, like new daughter, man. I'm going to bed at 930. Trust. Buddies are inviting me at, at Pachanga, the casino, at like 11. I'm like, dude, <laughs> do you know what time it is, man? This is wild. Don't call me right now. You're going to wake up yeah, my let's girl. Go. Shh. You know how many times I put my shit on mute because of that, man? Absolutely. Trying to hold me past night. Yeah, respect. Like that. Uh, yes, like that. But that's uh, also why we have you because you're a fucking family man. Very you, true. You got values. Absolutely, dude. And I think ultimately for us, we, we like to surround ourselves with people that aren't just successful financially, but also you know I have those that. good values. We'll do a whole it's hour. It's been huge for me on uh, on my wife and and what she's done to be able to put me in this position. So yeah, I'd love to talk about that. Cool, cool. Oh, so yeah. obviously, you're a real estate investor, real estate entrepreneur. You have a really thriving community of people that are learning what you're doing, sending you deals, making money with you. Before we get into all of that, tell us about the, the young Trevor who was the still young Trevor, but the younger Trevor before real estate. Well, um, I was a Marine, man. Once, you know, once a Marine, always a Marine, though, right? Appreciate your and, service. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support, right? It's a big thing. I think leaning into that, that's really how I ended up catapulting myself into real estate. I was going to do 30 years in the Marines, right? And so mm -hmm. when I came into it, I joined the service when I was 19. If we're going to go young, young Trevor, that was parkour, baby. Oh. That was parkour, right? So I, it was, I was about 14 years old. And I watched James Bond Casino Royale. You guys ever watched that one? Banger. Yeah, dude, trust. banger of a movie, right? The beginning, dude, that, it's a French guy named Sebastian Foucault who's running away from James Bond. I thought the scene was the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. I ended up uh, Googling it, and I said, you know, beginning scene, yada, yada. I went to YouTube, and all these side links for parkour popped up. And I'm like, what the fuck is that, right? So I clicked it, and all of a sudden, I was like unleashed to this Assassin's Creed world. I brought my mattress outside that day, my dresser out in my backyard. It was like the summer of you know, when I was 14, and I started trying to learn how to do a backflip. And uh, within the first couple months, broke my ankle. You know, I you know I've broken so many damn bones, and then just started being around other people. It's a huge network. Parkour. It's like is a tight culture. It feels like too. Dude, massive tight culture. It's like a brotherhood, right? There's parkour and there's free running, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole difference between yeah, the what two. Yeah, what is I was yeah. Yeah, it's like dude, it, people get like technical with it, right? Parkour is like uh, getting the point A to point B the fastest, most efficient way possible. That's parkour. So you're vaulting, you're getting there, you're not doing flips, you're not being flashy, you're trying to be efficient, right? Mm -hmm. Free running is very much getting the point A to point B, utilizing freedom of expression. So yeah, I'll, fuck, I'll come up this wall. Yeah, I can jump down or I can do a backflip, right? It doesn't matter, you know? So it's a little bit of the, it, and they were two different camps. Yeah. So coming into it, I was like a truest parkour and then I started realizing like flips are pretty fucking cool. Yeah. <laughs> so I started learning flips and then coming into it, dude, me and my boys, we got sponsored by the World Freerunning Parkour Federation. So you Federation. got deep into it. Dude, I got so deep. I was missing, you know, I was missing, um, you know, certain classes at, at high school to do like competitions in like Lake Tahoe and stuff like that. It was like skateboarding where I was like, I'm going to do this forever. Then you realize, you know, that's a wear and tear. I feel like I'm 30, yeah. you know, and I'm 17 years old. And me and my buddies, we opened up a gym called The Haven, you know, uh, The Haven over in um, in Sacramento. We were a team called The Way PK. We gave back to Jesus. It was like uh, we, we played, a, we, we, we performed a lot of churches. Hmm. And uh, just, yeah, coming into that, dude, it was like a catapult with your friends. And it was like skateboarding where you feel like you're the shit. And then 
when you're not touring, you're just like, you know, staying in your mom's house, you know, like in sweatpants, practicing handstands, you yeah, know what I yeah. mean? And, and then you end up moving forward. And then I was actually at uh, a subway right after a, a jam. They're called jams. And there was a, a recruiter there and I'm all sweaty and shit. And he was like, hey, you know, like, what are you doing? And I was like, oh, I just got done doing parkour, yada, yada. He's like, show me a flip. I did a backflip, you know? And then he was like, I'll buy your Subway sandwich if you give me five minutes of your time. And I'm like, I'm not going to join the military. Hell yeah, dude. And then uh, five minutes of the time, I joined the Marines. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Literally, I was dude, like, <laughs> I have, when you first said 14 parkour, I didn't know you actually meant parkour, but you got deep in that. Oh, bro. Yeah. I was getting paid. And that makes sense. No, it, but yeah. it, it, I've heard a lot of skate guys that were into skateboarding talk about how because you're constantly just failing like mm -hmm. to learn a trick you got to fail a thousand times and it's miserable you're breaking bones yeah it creates like a really good resilience and a lot of those people end up being super successful entrepreneurs you know what i've never even put the two together but it's so true yeah. i mean coming into it trying to learn back fools or you know like front 540s i mean you were there with determination for hours until yeah. you get it correct and i've yeah and getting hurt Oh my God, four concussions. I bled out my ears before in performances, man, on the concussion. I've broken both my ankles, multiple fingers. My entire wrist was fractured. And I think at the same time though, it's like you, that 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 is only a, a, like a stoppage for a moment. Cause you know that you never, you never allow that to default you. You kind yeah. of put yourself in a position you're like, what's next? What can I do in the meantime? So I guess you're always adapting. I've never even thought about yeah, entrepreneurship and parkour. Because I mean, you established at a really young age, like, Hey, I'm, I'm failing, 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 but it leads to me eventually learning how to do this trick. And it was worth it. You understood like delayed gratification essentially through that. And Damn. it's not just failing. It's like yeah. failing and getting fucking hurt. Oh, facts. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, when, when you're saying that you, um, what was the first injury that you broke your ankle or something? My first injury was a broken ankle. I thought you were going to say that that was how long you did parkour for, but then you fucking <laughs> kept doing it. Oh yeah. yeah. Sent it, dude. Hell yeah. yeah my bro. mom was, dude, I would show my mom videos. Then I got into it where it was like, I, dude, I look at things now that I'm 30 and I'll look at buildings when I go back home and I'm like, I hung off that bitch. Like, what am <laughs> I doing? Dude, I have photos of, you know, the crane hangs, you know, flipping from roof to roof, five story gaps to four story gaps. And I'm like, wow, I'm just young and dumb, dude. And it was a blast. But, you know, I thought, dude, I thought my success in entrepreneurship came from daddy issues, not parkour, <laughs> man. There you go, legit. bro. <laughs> there you go I learned something new and the first time one of the first times that you know we actually really spent some time together was in Vegas mm -hmm. and I remember at like 8 in the morning after a night all like out all night and we just got back to the Airbnb we were all in the pool and Trevor was like <laughs> I'm gonna do a backflip. I was about to ask. Like, still got and we tricks. were drunk, and we were. I was like, "Oh no! Like, what? What are you doing?" Everyone was like, "No, don't do it!" And then you just backflip, which makes you want to do it more. Yeah, and you backflipped off this ledge into the pool. I was like, "Oh shit!" Yeah. Like, that was actually good. And then I learned that you actually yeah. did parkour. So I, it's like a, I'm like a dog. It, it's like party tricks. It's always after a couple whiskeys, you know. And then I was just like, you know. Come on, boy. You know, like, yeah. dude, do something cool. And I love it, though. You know, I'm like, dance, monkey, dance. But it was funny, dude, that same place. That was like a fat Airbnb we stayed. That was beautiful. Oh, yeah. And they had that giant lifeguard uh, uh, chair. Yeah. Apparently, I gainered off that, and I broke it in oh, the you middle did. of my game. Yeah, dude. apparently. That was scary, dude. That one was scary. Yeah, yeah, I feel like we were talking recently about the fact we want to learn to do a backflip just because it's like it is a sick party trick. I'll teach yeah, you in 20 I'll minutes, do, bro. I'll do a backflip right now. Right. teach you in 20 minutes. Love that. The backflips are fun, but his side flip is where it's at. Yeah. yeah oh, the side, the side flip. flip. Yeah, okay. You nice. can still do it outside oh, the yeah. pool? Yeah, yeah, I'll do it outside. All right. I'll All do right. that sign. Well, maybe I got some nice shoes on, but we'll, we'll see what we got. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> so I, I know that you touched on, like, even when you were doing parkour, you were amongst, like, a network and a community. And obviously now you have, like, a thriving community, mm -hmm. uh, Biobeta and Biobeta University. So do you think that, like, maybe subconsciously or consciously, being involved in strong communities from, like, a young age inspired you to take the community to where it is now and where it's going to go yeah dude i really think you know that you should never be the smartest in the room you know what i mean and i think when it comes down to communities right this is exactly why you pay to not recreate the wheel i, I spend a bunch of money on education right you guys do too right you mm -hmm. always need to be a student so putting yourself in that position i love surrounding myself with other people initially because i thrive I, I yearn to learn more right they can do tricks i can't do right so 
hearing from them and closed mouths don't get fed, asking how they you know contort their body like that or when they decide to tuck and all that fun stuff, it translates directly into how you get deals. What market are you in? And so when you kind of put yourself out there and you create that initiative, communities are the best way to be able to grow for free, right? Yeah. You know, for free. My community is free. We have levels within it, but I'll tell you right now, like you can come in front of, you know, cash quick because you're coming in front of the right rooms, right? You just need to walk in, check if the door's unlocked. And if you bust in, you have some confidence. I mean, you can be successful in oh, any yeah. community that you join. And it's not even just for free. It's also, you enjoy it. I oh think having, God, having yeah. that community, not only do you get information quicker and you're learning, but it's like, it creates almost a, a passion for it when you have people that are like-minded that are doing it next to you. I mean, we're, we're built to operate with, with other people, yeah. you know, you do yeah. so much better. It's so much easier to work harder when you have somebody next to you. That's like, I'm willing to put in that same amount of work. That's the truth. You got to lean on people, man. For sure. You know, I, I even think w when it comes out of communities, right? People look at you like you have, you know, all your shit together and that's not the case. You just know what your strengths are. Right. And then you surround yourself with people who can compliment your weaknesses. 100%. And then all of a sudden you start building a team. And that team fosters a community, right? So I think 100%. coming into that is just dynamic. It is not just me. People always do, and I get that all the time. And I'm sure you guys do too. Well, they're like, wow, look at what you've done. And I'm like, no, nah, dude, you know, like I would be nothing, Cheers nothing that. without my community, my team, my wife, yeah. my daughter, and my purpose. I'd be nothing without them. You got to, you know, you might know what to do, but you have to understand why you do it. You never forget that. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So from parkour, that guy came up to you, did a backflip, black, uh, backflip yeah. for him, yeah. and he sold you into joining the Marines. Dude, he was actually a Navy recruiter. Ah. And I was like, okay, I know nothing about the military, bro. You know, I had family in the Air Force and stuff, and I had my great-grandfather who was a Marine. Rest in peace, John. I love you to death, man. And uh, he was the only other Marine in my family. But, yeah, it was a Navy thing, and what they brought in front of me was travel and adventure. Right. And mm -hmm. so I was like, I want to do both of those. You know, I like that. I like getting down yeah. and dirty. I went to the recruiting office. You know, no, no, no shame to Navy. Right. We are derived from the Navy as Marines, but you're not the Marines, bro. You know, and so coming into it, <laughs> that's dude, what I've heard. That's what dude, I've heard. Coming into it, it was like, go hard or go home. Right. And so I remember sitting there, I was going to work on submarines and a, they're called police. So a bunch of uh, future Marines were running in. True story. And I, I look back and I asked my recruiter and I was like, how come we never do this? Like, I've been here like four times and I'm the only one in the office. Like, where, where is everybody? And I'm like, oh, that's the Marines, man. You don't got to worry about that. Don't worry about that. And I'm like, but I kind of want to worry about that, you yeah. know? And so I was like, I'm going to go check him out. And you could tell like the defeat. He was like, oh, shit. And so I walked into my recruiter's office, Staff Sergeant Godina. He was my recruiter. I walked in and a bunch of the poolies were standing at a, you know, uh, attention to detail, spouting their general knowledge. And I walked in, they all looked at me and he looked at me and he goes, what the fuck do you want? And I was like, <laughs> I think I want to be, be you. <laughs> yeah, I think I want to do, do this. And uh, yeah, it was a codependent mama's boy dude. I, you know, came from, you know, single motherhood and then told my mom she was really nervous, but it was the best thing that ever happened to our relationship and me as a man. Oh, right, yeah, and so joining the Marines, yeah, was was amazing back in 2013. I have a brother-in-law who's, who's a Marine, and yeah, I think I remember one time when I was super young, I called him like I don't know how a I soldier? mix him up, a yeah. Navy or something. Yeah. He's like not in the fucking goddamn Navy. Marine. Yeah, yeah. He's like I'm a fucking Marine, mm -hmm. and we're the best out of everybody. Yeah. We're the best. Yeah. And I was like, all right, that's that's fair. Very I'll, well. I'll take your word for it. <laughs> okay. Literally. Stop hitting me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. So, <laughs> oh, so did you meet? your wife while you were still in the Marines? What a story, dude. <laughs> what a story. So I, when I joined, um, I'm a West Coast Marine, right? So they call us Hollywood Marines. Mm -hmm. You have that or uh, Paris Island over in South Carolina. I joined my first duty station was Quantico, Virginia, over at headquarters of Marine Corps. From there, I was attached to the Marine Security Guard Forces overseas. So From I was 19 in, and then? 19, yeah. So 19 to 20, Quantico. Virginia, and then 20 to 23, Africa, right? Africa and Europe, kind of everywhere, 16 wow. different countries in Africa. But okay. I was out there, attached Marine Security Guard Forces, never met my wife. We've known of each other, ish, right? That full transparency, when I was in like 10th grade or 11th grade, I had a buddy of mine who was like kind of, you know those buddies that are like skating buddies, you know? Yeah. He showed me a photo on a flip phone, it was a razor, and it was my wife. And he was like, he was like, this is my new girlfriend. I'm like, damn, she's hot, you know? Like, and he's like, I'm oh gonna my. marry this girl. I'm like, dude, you told, yeah, you know, you totally should. 
years later, I uh, before you know me and my wife ever uh, started dating, I messaged him. We didn't talk in years, and he was like, "You guys are perfect for each other." So it went it went great, right? But um, I was out in Africa. She slid in my DMs. <laughs> Come on. Okay. And, I value, uh, I value, man. Dude, I was amazing. And so she was like, I hear you're coming back. And I was going to come back, get out of the Marines after four years. And I was going to do uh, uh, my our parkour gym, right? We invested in the parkour gym. We were going to go do that mm -hmm. in, in Sacramento. And then I had a calling to just want to do more. I just really liked the service, you know? I love the travel. And so my wife was like, well, if you're not going to come back, like, when are we going to meet? And we're just talking, like kind of texting. Our time difference is 12 hours, you know? And so I was like, you could fly up here, you know, I'll pay for it. And she was like, down. And I was like, holy shit. That's right? unreal. Yeah, that's a woman right there. And oh, so yeah. I was like, okay. And now that I have a daughter, I look at her, I'm like, you will never fly for a boy <laughs> anywhere outside yeah. of your state, dude. Absolutely not. But I talked to her mom and she met my family. She actually met Frank for the first time. Frank was the first person to ever meet her. Nice. I, I was the, the validation. Yeah. There you yeah. Go. He was like, I don't know. This girl might be catfishing me. I need you to like make sure she's real. Yeah, dude. She was that like, good to be like, he was like, I think she's too good to be true. She's a dream come true. You're she like, came out. Hitting it off over text. Dude, yeah. I mean, yeah. FaceTime, you know, yeah. but you just never know. Picked her up from the airport, spent two weeks in Africa with her, safaris, everything. Long story short, that was the first time we met. The second time we met, I had to fly in to be the best man at my my uh, my best friend's wedding. The third time we ever met was to go to her sister's wedding, and then we got married. So the third time I ever saw my wife, we got hitched, dude, in secret. Totally just full Marine, uh -huh. eloped. Where? Uh, in Sacramento. I was there. Maybe it was like the horniness of that marriage and the other marriage. We are just like... <laughs> We got to do this. And so we ended up, yeah, we just eloped, man, fully eloped. Then we moved to San Diego together, which was my next duty station. And the rest is history, dude. How old were you when you guys got married? 20, 23? 23? Wow. It's crazy. I know. We're 24. We were already so hot. <laughs> fucking old, bro. bro. Dude, 20, That's amazing, yeah. though. And I feel like it's so cool because... To start, like, the beginning of the relationship was in Africa. Yeah. Doing so much fun yeah. shit. Like, yeah. that's what stuff of dreams are made of. But yeah. I think that, like, I, I, even with, you know, young marriage, I love it because at the end of the day, I think for any man, it's like, you're just looking for a woman that's like, really, like, I'll fly to where oh you're my at. God. Whatever you're Ride ready to fucking do, I'm woman. there. Let's do it. That's her mentality on everything I've done. Because guess what? I was going to do 30 years in the Marines, right? Mm -hmm. She was like, down. I love it. I'm going to support everything. Hey, I'm going to go into real estate. Fuck yeah. You're going to crush it, right? Now it comes down Hell to, yeah. I'm going to start my own business in real estate. Of course. Why wouldn't you? And I'm like... She's oh. pumping me up, dude. I'm like, dude, okay. You That's know? what you need. That's but what every man needs, yeah. really. Ultimate and it's always optimism until she goes, but you know what that takes, right? It takes this, 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 and this. Are you going to do all this right now? Because if not, you're going to waste my time. And I'm like, dude, she holds you accountable. Oh, yeah. Holds mm -hmm. you accountable all the time. That You know, that's hard to come across, especially yeah, nowadays. Sure. I feel like... You know, the society we're in, the culture, mm -hmm. women, like, especially like pretty and beautiful women, they yeah. expect everything you on without <laughs> without giving anything back. Right? Relax, Lewis. That's very true, I'm man. Sorry. It's very true. Honestly, you know, we always knew, and that's where I always go, understanding your roles, right? Coming mm -hmm. from the mentality of where I knew she wanted to be and identifying the focus of what we both wanted. My wife wanted to stay at home. My wife wanted a traditional family, and so did I. Right, you shouldn't conform. I mean, if you're going to be able to mesh your worlds together, you need to understand that you. I mean, the longevity of your relationship is yeah. going to go down a destination, and you want to make sure that both of you want to be there. Those right? core things. Yeah, it, it, they're huge, and so identifying that, making it come true, is just one step closer to, to, to strengthening your relationship, in my opinion. Right. Yeah, I love that, bro. I feel. I feel like every time I see you, you're always giving your wife like high praise and i think that says a lot about you one of my favorite quotes is behind every great man is a greater woman i love that you know i i will one up that and say right next to every great man is a great woman because they're next to you there you go i <laughs> agree but they're still great yeah, they're, they're still, still great dude they're, they're still you're gonna great get yourself in trouble. but i did say that one time dude i said yeah right next to me i was like hey you know she, she's right behind me and i looked over she was like well i don't i can't hold your hand from behind you i'm right next to you and i'm like you know what you do deserve all the damn credit too you know yeah but i agree that's no, that, a phenomenal I get, quote i get, I get yeah, your yeah, point yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah yeah right next but i think both i mean yeah she doesn't care you know but that's 100%. why you, that's why you got to get yourself filipina right there a so a nice little, little Mate, Filipino I have woman. a whole team of Filipino <laughs> women. <laughs> you never know, dude. That's what I'm saying. Um, no, for real. And I heard this thing the other day on a podcast where, like, if you look at life like a chessboard, the two main pieces is the king, the king and the queen. Mm -hmm. 
And although the king is like technically the most important piece, the queen is the most powerful piece on the board. Oh my right. god, yeah. And essentially, you know, women have a power over men that can't can't be denied. And if a woman gets a strong man like heads over heels about her, then really she she can do anything she's she wants. She's unstoppable. Yeah. yeah, she is. She's got all the Infinity Stones. She knows it, dude. <laughs> exactly. Does. Yeah, she she knows. And I think going into it, man, and that's the thing. From the service, I had a, did. You know, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna boast about it, but you know, if you were in the service with me, you'll know I had a very illustrious career. Right? I was an E6 in under six years. I had three meritorious promotions. I was NCO of the year. I was I was staff not commission officer of the year. I was. I was fast tracking myself to be what I knew I could be, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. yeah, I wanted to. And so coming into it, my wife knew her role. It was very supportive. And honestly, even though I provide financial support, you know, my wife has always provided emotional support. That's mm -hmm. huge, right? Because I'm a words of affirmation kind of guy. I need the reassurance. Yeah. That's what I need, right? My wife's acts of service. So she knows you're providing for me. You know, let me tell you how much I, I appreciate that. And that's huge for you. Oh, and yeah. that's not an ego thing, everybody. That's just f identifying how you guys, your love language is and seeing exactly. how you can build off of that. So in the Marine Corps doing that, I tell about my day. You're working from 4 a.m. to, you know, 10 at night sometimes. Then you're in the field for weeks. And, I mean, you're gone, you know. So coming in there, she was identifying that, and it was great. But translating that into a business, right, when we started f realizing that real estate was kind of taking over my day-to-day, -day, she never stopped that, right? And so, and I put her through the ringer, bro. Like, I'll tell you right now. Like, I, we were going to do 30 years. We were going to go to Japan. And the transformation from the military into uh, real estate was because basically one thing it was, and we say this all the time, my wife's failure was our greatest success. My wife, literally, she's a you know beautiful woman and she was like, I'm gonna get into real estate, like randomly one day. And I was like, hell yeah, like you're gorgeous. I don't know anything about real estate, but you should totally do it, right? I feel like yeah. you can, you could sell a house. I buy a house from you, you know what I mean? <laughs> See a little pencil skirt, you know, yeah. be nice, you know? And- um, Where do I sign? Yeah, I know. And so I bought her a webinar in San Diego, it was, or not a webinar, it was a seminar for like 60 bucks. And uh, she was stoked. She was like, I'm gonna go. And my wife's like an in introverted extrovert, right? So when she gets into something, like she's very open, mm -hmm. but until then she's a little closed off. And I'm just an extrovert, right? We all are, right? <laughs> and so the day of that Sunday, and it was a football Sunday, I was gonna watch the football, right? Go Niners, baby, hey, let's do it. <laughs> and um, she, she woke up super nervous and she was like, I can't go, right? There's gonna be hundreds of people there. I literally can't go. Yeah, I'm like, I'm not wasting 60 damn dollars, right? <laughs> like you're gonna go. And she, we got in this huge fight and she was like, you go. Like if, that, if it's so important to me or so important to you, you go, don't waste your money. And I was like, fine. I went to the event, I came back and I go, we're gonna be multi-millionaires in real estate, dude, <laughs> swear to God. So coming into that, I feel like my wife would have loved the on-market approach, but I don't know if the networking really was for her. And by the way, she's a phenomenal loan processor, right? She, she, she should get her NMLS. A lot of lenders are looking for her. She's so organized, she's great on the phone, but her passion is to be at home, right? Mm -hmm. But for me, I just loved the networking. I like being 100%. able to command a room. I like being able to work with other, you know, people in this in the situation where you can build bridges. That's all we do. We're just building bridges with 100%. each other. And the relationship piece was great. I ended up reading when I got back. Somebody told me, "Well, do you want to do all market? Yada yada." And I heard um, like wealth. There's a difference between being rich and being wealthy, right? And I was sort of I was like, "I want money. I want to be rich," you know. And so they started talking about wholesale, getting into cash quick. And then somebody told me about the Burr Method by David Green, Bigger Pockets, like the book. Oh, mm -hmm. gee. Phenomenal book, man. And uh, I ended up reading that. And, dude, I went, like, straight military trap houses, bro. I like was like, wait, I can buy a house, zero down in the military, rent all my rooms and my boys and just party every day? I was like, done. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I did that. Happen. So, yeah, dude. So I told my wife, and I was like, hey. This is going to be kind of wild, okay, because we're going to rent out some rooms and we apartments and stuff, and, you know, you're going to be around a bunch of dudes. And she was like, there's an end goal. You know, I ended up selling it to her, right? And so we ended up having my buddies rent out the rooms. We were cash flowing a bunch. But, dude, I got out of hand with it, bro. It was like really? my wife's family came in uh, one time for a holiday, or you know, for, like, Thanksgiving or something, and I rented out my living room. I had a bed in the living room. <laughs> And all the beds, bro. And I was like, look at me. And then my wife's dad, who is like a father to me, um, rest in peace, Phil, he was a big reason. He was like, you know what? The hustle is amazing. He was like, your 20s are for struggling. And he goes, your 30s are for getting your shit together. And he's like, I love what you're doing. But then when we 
got behind closed doors, he goes, this is great, but this is temporary. He's like, my daughter deserves way better than what you're mm -hmm. doing right now. Respect. You can't run a motel out of this house, right? And I was like, yeah, but look at all the money. He goes, yeah, but look at your relationship. And I was like, oh my God. So Wisdom. I did, yeah, and so I was like, there's gotta be, there's gotta be layers. And I ended up peeling it back, and that was right when I told my wife I was gonna, you know, get my license and be a little bit more organized with it. And uh, that was before it was. It was about ten days before my deployment that I was gonna go to the Middle East. This was in 2020, in 2019. I apologize. And Phil, my father-in-law, had died. Yeah, he, mm -hmm. he had died of an aneurysm, and my wife took it horribly, man. And it's tough. so did we. And I'm wrapping this up. I'm sorry. I'm I'm talking a bunch, guys. No, you're good. You're good. And uh, ended up, I told the Marine Corps, I said, hey, you know what? I could do both at the same time, real estate, Marine Corps. And I said, hey, I got to stay back for my wife. She's in shambles. And, you know, and they said, no, you know, you're slated to go. I'm sorry. It's a revolving door. You know, she'll be fine. And I realized I'm like, I, I do so much in the military to provide for my family. The one time I have to be there, they say no. And I'm not saying it's a bad taste in my mouth, but I am saying that I should control my destiny with my time. And I should have been there for my woman. And so I said, honey, I'm going all in with the real estate and I'm going to make sure that we end up putting ourselves in the position to win. And she believed in me. Oh, yeah, I got out of the service and just did real estate ever since, man. That's I love beautiful. That, bro. How, how old are you as like when you guys got married and, or not when you guys got married, but when you went to that course and you got into real estate? 20, uh, 2018. And then 2019 was when he passed. And then I ended up getting out in 2021 because I was contractually obligated, but I was doing real estate full time in the service as well. Yeah. Were you, did you oh. still have to go out when they wanted you to go out? Oh yeah, still deployed. I and got was, my I got all my credentials for my on-market license when I deployed. So that's know. what really set the seed cuz you literally oh, had yeah, to go. I, did. I had like, to go. 100%. I, and nowhere else you wanted to be in next nope. to your wife. And it was during COVID, right? Went over to Kuwait and Qatar over there and then I had to do a bunch of security stuff for these congressmen and I just felt like it was totally important but where I was in life, I was like this is just a waste, you know what I mean? And my wife is here. I was like, dude, Right, and I keep bringing my purpose back, but that's your why, you know. I'm like, dude, I would have loved to be out here enjoying this, but I'm like, I'm like, my my purpose is just totally shifted, right? Yeah. So I just couldn't wait to be able to come back, and that was during COVID, bro. And I did not think America was like super shut down, you know, because I was gone the entire time, and I'm like, what do you mean, like, the is street? It, like, is it really is that it? bad? <laughs> We live in America. Yeah, yeah. Come to find out, it was apparently pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. I, I think it's so important, like, because your relationship, it sounds very traditional, which is what I believe a lot of men want, mm -hmm. but a lot of women don't want nowadays. Yeah. And it has traditional roles where essentially you protect and provide, and your wife would support support you nurture. in every way possible and nurture. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. And I, I just think this like, every man, tr like, wants that. And throughout history, that's always been the way. It's always worked. Uh, it's just fucked up, like, how everything, like, everyone's trying to change it now. And yeah. it's like... The nuclear the family is yeah, not... The, and yeah. that's something... You guys agree. Is that something that you would want to, you know, buckle down with? That's what I'm going to have. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's what you're going to have, brother. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Right now, man. Yeah. yeah you, you said it earlier. Like, I just want to... You know, I have words of affirmation. I want to feel appreciated. Like, men are willing to go out and be working 12 to 15 All to 16 day. hours a day. As long as I come home and you're like, good job, baby. Yeah. You know, like, I'm, I'm proud of you. I feel protected. Do you know I feel how provided far that goes? for. Exactly. And then do we're you know like, how far that goes? fuck yeah, I'll sleep four hours. I'll go do it again tomorrow. Dude, 100%. And dude, I get texts every once in a while and I'm, you know, working. I do my Wednesday calls and you, yeah, Louis sees me on those all the time. Like, mm -hmm. I give my all to my community, right? I get tired and then she'll send me a quick video. She's like, I tune in for 10 minutes, but you know, you, you, you know, you do these kinds of things to be able to give me a life, to be able to be with my daughter and sends me a photo of me and my girl. And I'm like, Let's run it back, you know, like again, dude. You know, yeah. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah, that's a that's a great way. And honestly, actually, my best friend, you know, Drew. He uh, his wife. They're both, you know, in a position where they're it's a dual income household. She's very sturdy in her career, and mm -hmm. she's a teacher, right? And he works for Disney, and he's doing phenomenal. But they actually they don't want that. So I wouldn't say it's for everybody, but I would say if it is for you, don't compromise. There yeah. you go. If it's for you, dude, do not compromise because if you're going to want that, that's what you're going to yearn for and you're a provider, right? I, I think that's the sad thing about what Lou said earlier is like a, a lot of men these days, because majority of women don't want that or a yeah. lot of women don't, a lot of men are starting to compromise. Yeah, they and think they don't want it, bro. They, they Well, they they're, they're, they're having to make themselves think it, yeah. right? Because they can't find women that also want that. And yeah. so they're like, I, I guess I got, I got to change. Yeah. I can't be right if I can't find anybody that wants the same thing I want. That's true. And it's sad. A lot of men aren't even 
the person that they need to be God, so to true. be in that that's relationship. Another, yeah, that's another thing. Like, to be fair, in defense for women, like, how many men out there right now are just weak, can't fucking even provide for themselves, but they still want a beautiful woman to support to support them and nurture them? Yeah. So it's, it's like, it's, there's two sides of the coin yeah. always. Uh, oh, it's, it's so true, man. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. No. You got and men these days that want to be the stay-at-home dad. Yeah, bro, that's true. You know, I get that. Hey, it's you know what I mean? Hey, OnlyFans pays well, bro. But I won't respect you. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I have yeah, some no, nice it, feet. Dude, it's it, yeah, there it is, brother. Dude, actually, some of my followers have hit my wife up for her feet before. Oh, Like, like more wrong. than 10. Hey, more that's, than 10. What, that's what it does to you. Yeah, it's, it's insane. But I agree with you guys completely. I agree with you wholeheartedly, man. That is huge. Yeah, for sure. So... So coming out of the military, you came out during you came out during uh, COVID. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I came out. So I got back. Um, I got back in July of 2020, and then I got out in April of 2021. Gotcha. Yeah. But by this point, you know, you'd had some rentals, right? By this point, yeah, had some rentals. I had some property, and then I already was wholesaling. Right. Okay. I was wholesaling before um, before I left in uh, for deployment. Mm -hmm. Found some success just getting in front of it, right? And that's why I keep I hear this all the time, man. Like it's not, I dude, I I literally hate the excuse, man. When it, it's just accountability, you know, you're working nine to five. I totally get that, but from five to eight, what are you doing? You're home, right? What's yeah. more important, you know? Because I'll tell you right now, mine was sitting my ass, in, you know, in front of podio where I had two VAs calling, and I would get in the front of three or four opportunities, and I would call them every single day, and it just creates consistency. Small wins are going to create big things, right? And so I did that Love for that. months. And then my very first deal when I got back from deployment was uh, 6000 which I probably end up spending. I don't shuffle that. Frank said it because it, it's loud, okay? I probably ended up spending... Um, I don't know, ten grand to make six thousand, but then I got spoiled, bro. My second ever deal was one hundred and fifty thousand dollars wholesale. wholesale. Yeah, shut the fuck wholesale, up. Wholesale, bro. One In Fallbrook, which, California. Wait, wholesale fee. Wholesale fee. How much was it? One hundred and fifty grand. I'll show you the HUD. And wow. for for those that don't know. If you're in wholesale, if you've been in wholesale for some time, you hope for the, a lot of people that have been in it for years still haven't had a six figure fee, including us, including us. So yeah, that's why right now I was like, shut the fuck up. Yeah, Your bro, second deal, you got 150 racks. And I literally was that asshole where I told my wife, I go, this is easy. We're going to do this every month, oh, babe. God. One deal then, a month. Brother, They're one good. deal a month, we saw it. And then you come to find out, uh, not easy, right? Mm -hmm. And it's like recreating the wheel with it. And so I, I, so as I got in front of it, I, you know, luckily I was around the right people and I paid five grand for a mentorship. Garrett Long, he's actually a great friend of mine. We did multiple deals. He's a huge private money lender with my business now, but it's because I stuck with it. And he said, reinvest, you know, reinvest, bro. Like, what are you doing? What are you going to buy? Right. And I'm like, yeah, you're completely correct. So he put some money in the savings, paid off the credit cards, all that fun stuff. And I reinvested. And then in, to, in order to do so, you get in front of better leads, right? You know, you start qualifying more, start vetting correctly, you start being more confident. And then identifying that if it wasn't a uh, wholesale, which um, which was mainly my business, I was gonna list it, right? So I got my license. I was like, fuck it, I'm gonna list it. And that's the segue to Novations because I was listing all these really shitty houses because they didn't want my lowball offer. And I was like, well, let's just put it on there. I'll discount my commissions, yada, yada. So I got my license and I'm getting listings, yeah, but they're homes nobody wants to buy. You know what I mean? And so yeah. there was an Air Force cat one time and it was while I was still in the service and uh, it was like a Saturday, I went to their house and it was worth 400. I thought I was gonna give them 260, right? But they needed 300, like they needed 300, right? I think it was like a loan thing and kind of like the Alabama deal, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I was like, God damn it, I'm gonna have to list this home at like 330 because it's it, the floors aren't even done, you know? And their cat, I'm not, you know, I'm not hating, but their kitchen, you know, they're, you know the hardware for your kitchen? Mm -hmm. They were all different color roosters. Like, uh, it was like a weird... You love that. Yeah, it was like super, you know... Quirky. Quirky, yeah. And like so every like, other wow. month they went and got one. Yeah, but. dude, I know. Like, here you go. You know, and, you know, it is what, I actually kept a couple of those. Uh, they were in my office. And um, I just, dude, I was... I luckily, Pace Morby, man, shout out to the legend, right? Mm -hmm. Trust. Shout out to Pace. I was watching a video on the way there that just came up, and it was introductions to Novations when Pace was in front of a board, and he was discussing Novations. And I was like, okay, well, who's going to find those deals? Dude, so dude, it was the universe, yeah. bro. And so I went there, talked to this guy, and he goes, well, it's going to be vacant. 
right? He's like, I have to leave. I'm PCSing, which means permanent change of station. Like he's leaving where uh, it was in Rosamond, California. He was Air Force. And I was like, okay, I could list it. You know, he's like, all right, but I need my, like, okay, you know, that's fine. But you know, if you list it at 3.30, what am I gonna walk away with? And I just told him, I said, yo, why don't we do a novation? Right? And he goes, what's that? And I said, look, let's not worry about this. Why don't I pull it? <laughs> I don't know. Hey, hey, dude, I'll tell you right now, this is my exact conversation, bro. I was like, I was like, oh, you know what a novation is? I was like, <laughs> it's like, wait, what is a novation? I was like, I'll guarantee you $305,000, right? You want to walk away with 300, right? Because my, my cash offer is here. Why don't I give you 305,000? Why don't I come in there? I got an entire crew. I fucking know nobody, right? <laughs> nobody. And I was like, and I got the funding to renovate this. And I did, but I don't know what I'm doing, right? And I was like, I'll fully, I'll fully renovate the home. Any appreciation I create through the renovation, right? I'll take as a fee. But when I list this, I'm also going to pay for my fee, the buyer's agent fee, as well as your closing costs. He was sold. He was like, how long is this going to take? I said, I could probably do this in seven to 10 days to get it where it needs to be and put it on market. And he was like, if we can get done with the next four months, I think we're good. I was like, oh, guaranteed. Went in there, he ended up dipping out. He went to Starbucks with his wife. And I said, let me walk the home and take some photos. I called my buddy, Mark, shout out Mark Baxter in Arizona, who I served with, right? And so in, in, uh, in Virginia, no, North Carolina, I apologize. And um, dude, I FaceTime, I was like, what, bro, you're a contractor in Arizona? Like, what the fuck am I doing, you know? And he goes, oh, bro, give me out there, give me $11,000 and some Bud Light, I got you. Flew him out here. We ended up flipping that home in about 14 days, put it on market, sold $5,000 more than asking. I made 70 grand. Did you sell it at 405? Dude, 405. 405. Wow. And it sold, and I was like, wait. What the, what did I wait, just, wait, dude, what, just what is this? And <laughs> gave him a big piece, gave my buddies who were also in the service, you know, a chunk of it. And then I was like, there's something with this. I actually thought I invented it, okay? Yeah. Because Pace does <laughs> equity protection innovations. Like you yeah. don't really put money into it, yeah. mm -hmm. but you arbitrage, you put it on the market. And I go, but you could do this. And so I was like telling everybody, right? I was like, yeah, I started doing deals. Cause the thing is once you do that one and the buyer's agent on that deal is Danny Mack, who's a luxury agent in Los Angeles. He's also a huge private money lender with me. He's done three innovations with me because he was a buyer's agent. He looked at the settlement statement. He goes, what did you do? Yeah. And I was like, I did this. And he was like, I want to do that too. So I started networking right away. Or I was like, I'll do another one. Like, you know, how can we work together? He was like, I'll list them. I was like, do you have any money? He was like, yeah, I got like 20 grand. I was like, well, I need that for another innovation. <laughs> and dude, from then on, it just became a great relationship. Um, now I can use other people's money yeah, too. Dude, like, wait, 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 what? Wait, wait. Dude, yeah, I haven't put a, yeah, it blows my mind when it comes down to, when you start kind of pioneering these things and you can, you can really focus on the layers of it, people, you know, they believe in you, which is yeah. huge. The very first time I ever borrowed money for a big deal was my mother-in-law and I wanted to match her 30 grand, 30 grand. And she goes, I believe in you hundred percent. She gave me, and she's never taken her money back, and we've done multiple deals since. Apple right? doesn't fall far from the tree with, Dude, your, with your wife, bro. She's savage. You know, Violetta, my mother-in-law. Yeah. Man. No, but you're, you're right about that. Like, it goes well. Because when you said the 150K fee on the wholesale, yeah. I was like, man, I love that that happened for you because it breaks my heart when I talk to like, wholesalers or, or more so like flippers, like real estate investors. I hear it more commonly where their first flip, it go, doesn't go mm. right. And then they're like, oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm out. I'm not going to do real estate. And it's like, it's just so unfortunate because if they would have had a, the first deal be successful, they could have had the next six be negative and they would have pushed forward. I know. And that's, that's also same thing though, man, which is rude, but like good. Yeah. Because you don't have the fucking stuff. Yeah, exactly. Like, good. Like get out. Yeah. You know, just due to the fact that man, like if you want that bi-weekly, which I've had partners, I've had friends who are like, man, I want consistency. Like, Trevor, what are we doing? I'm like, brother, we're chasing cars, baby. Like, we're trying to find out what we got. You know what I mean? If, yeah. if you can't do this, you're in the wrong industry, bro. Yeah. You know? And so <laughs> identifying that, they're like, they're dipping. And then they look at you and they get pissed off. They're like, man, you know, how the fuck? It's like, dude, I just stuck with it, bro. I finally caught a car. And I was like, wait. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? So I identified that. But it's so true. You know, getting, a, getting in front of a good deal is good. But getting in front of a bad deal quicker is gonna uh, it's gonna tell you if you got the appetite for it or not. That's yeah. true. No, that's really true. There are, there are so many people that, you know, when they see him and they see his success, they think, oh, he's he's been so lucky. He's done this. He's done that. He's had an amazing career. But what they don't see is all of the hard work that he puts behind it. You know. For sure. My God, this might be hot, man. This everybody, guy, everybody, yeah. kind of <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it's true. Yeah, it, it it it's you know it's unfortunate. You got you got to not pay attention to that noise. But I truly, thoroughly wish everybody who has followed my journey and nothing but love, but I have been in situations where it is unfortunate. You gotta make hard decisions, dude. Yeah. Your, your team grows and then you realize, you know, this isn't for you and you gotta make those, you gotta be the bad guy, but you know, the harder you work, the luckier you get, right?
There you go. Exactly. Trust me. There you go. And and it's such a big thing. Like for us, the first project, while we literally the sec, actually the first month that we started like wholesaling full time. We decided to buy this 3,000 square foot house <laughs> that didn't even have any walls, like didn't even have any drywall. We what? took out a hard money loan, not realizing. What that, year is this? Like 2021? Oh, like, oh, no. Uh, no, 2022. Okay. okay. We're so going recently... to prove our resilience off the bat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Took out a hard money no- loan, not knowing that to get the draw, we had to front the rehab. <laughs> so we thought they just gave us the rehab money. <laughs> So we were like, oh, this is great. Like, money, please. Like, yeah. Parks and Rec. Money, and then I'm like, please. I'm making the draw Literally. request. Like, right, I need 50 grand like, for this. They're like, well, show us the sc- the proof of work. Yeah. I'm like, what? We haven't yeah. done it yet. Yeah. That's why I'm requesting the money. <laughs> I can't send you photos of shit I haven't yeah. done yet. And they're like, well, no, you have to do the work first, and then you get it. I was like, fuck. Yeah. And by this point, we've done, like, three wholesale deals, and we're like, where are Honestly, we going to get this three more money? than most, man. Three more. What was your first, what was your guys' first wholesale fee? Uh, three thousand five hundred. Film. Uh, Our second one was <laughs> also three thousand five hundred, and then we had a ten k. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. And then we were like, ten k. I love. What's your guys' biggest wholesale? Thirty eight. Thirty eight grand. Yeah. 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 But that's still a great so wholesale. Man. We were about to have a seventy thousand dollar one on, but kind yeah, of. when you were showing me, right? No. No. Yeah. That 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 one's that's gonna be good. But that's a double close. Um. But mm. th- the funny thing about this one. So we get a property locked up, and that's what inspired us to do the, what we're doing on this one. It's like little market in Indiana, and you know you don't have a lot of sales comps just because yeah. there's a short supply of you know demand of inventory. But we realized like you know, properties, even though a lot don't sell, it's because there isn't many houses. There's two streetlights here, but every property <laughs> that goes up gets pending, goes pending in two to eight days. We're like, so what's going on here? Obviously, it's a really desirable town, yeah. but there's no inventory. And so we end up throwing it up for, I think we had it at 70. We throw it on the market for 78 or 149. Oof. Get an offer asking. And this is an ovation, by the way. And this is an ovation. Baby. Having clothes on it. Everything's going great. Um, you know, the seller's on. He's super cool. I'm talking to him every other day. We're staying in touch with him. And then day 45, we don't even think about getting a slight extension. And we have an NOI recorded, all that good jazz. Yeah. But day 46. The wife calls me, talks to the husband the day before he's cool. Wife calls me, we're not selling to you. I want 149. And I'm like, whoa. I'm like, who are you? Yeah. Where's your husband? Where's the nice guy? And <laughs> she ends up just thankfully, like my realtor was able, I guess she didn't like dealing with men, whatever the case. She got wind of it. And we were just she like. on title? Yeah. Yeah. And so she ended up making us, um, she was going to kill the deal unless we came up to this number. And we were like, all right, you know what? We had to come up to like 105. We ended up making 30, 30K on it as yeah. opposed to 75. Yeah. And so it was rough. a whole You already ordered your Lambo and everything? Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I can't we were getting fuck. ready. <laughs> but it, it, um, I remember like we were, she told me what they needed to get. And the buyer had already put their home for sale. They had <sighs> gone into contract. It's continued. Had yeah, a yeah. realtor that had just developed a relationship with. Her, her reputation on the line, the, li- the buyer's agent on the line. So many people involved. I was like, look, I'm not, I'm just give this woman, she's psycho, obviously. I'm going to give her what she wants. And, you know, we, we're still making 30K, whatever, not bad night. And, and this is such proof of what goes around comes around because I didn't think about it. And we were stoked to make what we made. It wasn't 75. We could have been pissed because it wasn't 75. It was like 31. But we were stoked because, you know, next deal is yeah. going to come in. Still 30K. I get a call last week because the same realtor is now listing this one for us. I get a call, man, no names, not going to disclose, but I get a call and she's like, hey, Jess, I just got a call from this random girl and she wanted to speak to you because she thought I was the realtor for her father, the man that I had been talking with that had been everything smooth. And it turns out he just passed away two weeks ago and um, his bank accounts were cleared, all this stuff. And um, they think that the woman that he was with basically, like, might have done, might have been some foul play because he was on dialysis. And keep in mind, day 46, I don't get to talk to, the, to that wonderful gentleman anymore. Oh she comes into gosh. the picture. And my realtor is telling me, she's like, Jess, now that I'm thinking about it, like, they were at signing. And she was like, sign here, sign there. And so I talked to the, the daughter, ended up calling me. Yeah. 
the daughter ended up calling me and you know she told me everything she's like i'm sorry that like which of a woman like honestly my, i looked at the numbers my my father was perfectly okay with selling it to you guys for 70. he was selling it at the amount that exactly washed it he just wanted to get out of that property yeah. he had no issue with it and you know you're kind of caught up in it i'm sorry that you guys missed out on 35k you're supposed to make but rest assured we're looking into it and like of course this i guess this woman ended up she sh af right after he passed away she goes to the family hey i'll offer to cover him getting cremated right away and they were like oh okay like get him cremated and then she's like okay i'm not helping with anything else Oh and now they can't gosh, look into the <gasps> they can't look into because no. they can't do any uh, they can't do a, uh, an autopsy it, autopsy <gasps> we're on a true crime podcast right now dude dude and i'm literally just sitting here like you know what and but this woman the daughter super nice she's like it she's like hey um you know i i just really appreciate you jumping on the phone with me if you could take taps of everything you know the attorneys because we didn't now we can't do an autopsy there wasn't blood work we're gonna have to just wait for her to mess up and we're gonna need to eventually attack then so this might be down the line but we might contact you eventually and i was like she yeah. did it yeah, yeah. Like, it was her it was she her. was down she was a cut <laughs> no. no but <laughs> um but it was such full circle and then um she's like yeah now i have my other property for my dad i don't even know what to do with i'm like we are yeah we, we, yeah. Do, we, we do buy, buy real estate we buy and she was like no 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 like definitely like you're you're the first you have i'm telling you right now you have first tips on that property because you know I, relationships it just and that's I what it comes that. down to you know you 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 do good by everybody and it ends up coming back around yeah. we serve a just god and i love that i man. i it made it was such a reflection point because i looked back and i was like i remember how happy i was to think like you know what this woman's really like coming at us but I'm gonna come up to an amount that is pretty absurd because everything was smooth until she randomly came into the picture and yeah. now I can't even talk to this guy that was I had a great relationship with. But whatever, you know, you reap what you sow. Didn't think about it and then I get that call a few weeks ago and I was like What was his name? I probably shouldn't say. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. Yeah. Yeah. But, we'll, we'll talk off. But, but that's well, why hey, we yeah. to you, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. To you, you, man. Rest in peace. Fuck that bitch. <laughs> But that, that's why we get paid more than wholesalers. Uh, not that more than realtors. <laughs> Thanks. Because we have to deal with shit like this. Brother. Evil witches. 4Ds, baby. Killing their fucking husband. Yeah, man. With the 4Ds. Death, distress, divorce, and debt, brother. I'm going to tell you right <laughs> now. favorite four people. 4Ds. And you know what? Any situation, <laughs> but have you ever said that before? No, I haven't. The next Dude, time anybody's like, why I'm do you make more than a realtor fee? I'm tattooed feed? across my chest, homie. I say it all the time. And I deal with realtors. Four big you know? Ds. Wait, wait. Four big Ds, yeah. Wait, they wait. call it big D, actually. <laughs> oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, death, distress, divorce, and debt. And I'll tell you right now, any situation that you're going to get in front of that the realtor doesn't want to deal with is because of that. And you're not going to be able to bridge the gap between a problem and a solution if you're going to come at them in a selling way and not a solution way. Mm -hmm. You have to be solution oriented. What you guys did was built relationships and I love that it was a novation, right? Yeah. And you know, call to action to everybody because honestly on the novation side, right, you're trying to build optimism for everybody to be able to make it work. And instead of being creative, you know, novations are creative real estate, it's complementary real estate, man. You're here to complement a situation and give them exactly what they you want to put it, them in a position to win as well. And we call it the win, 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 brother. No, I love that. I meant you actually just remind, I meant to say it earlier when you first described how that first novation for you happened. Mm -hmm. I meant to mention like the beautiful thing about that is that everybody ended up winning from it. Brother, you ended up saying you're not going to get 300, you're going to get 305. You're going to get five grand more, yeah. And you know, I'm going to fly my buddy out. He's going to be stoked. We're all mm -hmm. going to get involved and you know, we're going to make a killing on it. It's a, it's, it's a win-win for everybody. Dude, mm -hmm. and I'll tell you right now, and you know we've done novations too, right? We've made 160 grand, right, guys? Like we split that bad boy. Hell the thing yeah! Is, hell yeah, brother! But the thing is, Jeez getting in rats. front of yeah, Trust. yeah, baby, that was a that 160 was a good deal. racks. Cheers, Virginia. Get in there. <laughs> <laughs> Bleep. But uh, when it comes down to um, damn table legs, yeah. When it comes down to the novation pitch approach, man. A lot of them are on the six figures for me, but the thing is, when you treat the seller in a way where they feel as if they're a part of it, mm -hmm. I mean, oh my God. They love you, bro. They love it because they feel like they're a part of this HGTV show. They feel like they're like, everybody wants to flip a house. So when, yep. you, when you get in front of the seller and you say, hey, I'm going to give you sixty or you know $50,000 more. I'm going to take care of all the headache and the nuance. I'm going to focus on the marketing, maintenance, and management of your home. You get to kick your feet back, white glove service, and just watch us go to work. They love it. And then I go, hey, you know, we're doing the kitchen. You know, hey, 
hey, Bertha, what do you want? Do you want eggshell white or do you want white dove? What yeah. kind of backsplash do you <laughs> what like? What would look nice? Yeah, what would look nice? Like, oh my God, I kind of like the white dove. We're going to, hey, Bertha wants white dove, guys. Let's, We're yeah. going to do this. And now she, when they get to walk it, they're like, wow. Right? And then they get to see what goes into it. That's the thing. People who fail at wholesale, don't, or with, maybe with creative or even wholesale, is they're not, commu- they, you need to over communicate. You know, with your sellers, I, I'm a firm believer mm-hmm. of that because when you tell them about the situations and the issues and how you solve it and what's going on the day to day, they're like, "You are doing so much for me, right?" And you're like, "Of course, you're worth it. You're worth it. We're trying to get to the finish line together." So when you get to the finish line, you're like, "Yeah, I did make all this money." And I've had them go, and they drop to their knees. They're like, "Wow, you know, like you deserve it. You deserve every penny." And I'm like, "Yes." You know, and some <laughs> of them, dude, to this day, I even have for holidays. Some even send me Christmas cards still. Right? And I'm like, dude, tell me where else you can get that. I mean, that's so cool. It's very me. true. It is. That that's was part so of the cool. one the one two one that we're about to take on together. Yeah. That was part of it. Yeah. They were they were like obviously you, you taught us novations. Yeah, yeah. Respect. Don't learn novations from anybody else, but invest with Trev. For Boom, real. Baby. Buyerbeatuniversity.com. The real novation. But the that. real. Hey, uh, rich, <laughs> baby, I love you. I love me some rich. You know, me and Rich are great friends. We call ourselves the novation lords. I love that. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little bit of a combined effort, but I agree. No, we need Yeah. <laughs> is, that ta- is that Insta tag taken? Novation Lord. Novation Lord is not taken, Brother. bro. Brother. Quickly, quickly. Call, call up. Yeah, get, get your media guy. Dude, Dude, make Michael, sure I gotta get, I gotta right get Michael from Auto, yeah, Auto, yeah, Appleton Automation. He runs all my all my stuff. I got to tell him to, to take that bad boy. If you're watching this, Novation Lord needs to be taken. <laughs> They're going to take it. It's, They're it's gonna already DM taken. Oh, shit. Gonna be like, it. Wait, no, but, no we're oh, taking it. We're live, bro. Oh, fuck. They're going to go and they're going to do a... I'm going to get a DM request and be like $5,000. Yeah. Like, damn it, man. I can't win. No, um, I don't even know what I was saying. But for real, though. <laughs> but yeah, oh, no, one two one Kellogg. That was something the seller mentioned. Fire deal. He was like, he was like, uh, I would, it would be really cool to see this thing. They've been sitting on it. Yeah. They've been sitting on yeah. it a few, like several years. Guess what? And like, yeah. it, it would be cool to see it get like turned around. Yeah, man. Like, it's your baby. It's the journey, brother. I was like, you got to be there when this yeah. thing is sold. Their granddaughters could have grown up, you know, getting marked while they get older, right? They yeah. This house might be dilapidated, but the memories are fresh, baby. <laughs> right? You got to be able to help that out. Yeah. <laughs> baby. <laughs> no, for real. And I think it's true, it, though, man. Yeah. You know what I mean? It is. And it's such it is. a nice touch, though, isn't it? Cause oh, most, my God, like, yeah. They're either going to get a cash offer for less than they want. Or they get to be a part of this. And I was thinking, like, you could even, like, as a selling point, be like, yo, we're going to make a whole TV episode out of this oh property. My God. And upload it to YouTube. And the one that we did, man. Jose did so yeah. good. Yeah, I firmly agree with you. Yeah. How is this not a show? You know what I mean? For real. Right. I um, paid to fix your home. I paid to fix your house. Like, I mean, when it comes down to it, that's a huge selling point with these sellers, and they love it. Dude, the biggest the biggest thing I get, it's actually in our in our office with our acquisitions team, and it says, what's the catch? Because every seller, when performed correctly, they go, what, what's the catch? And you go, honey, nothing. Like, we take care of all this. Here's my I'm seller the credibility. I'm the catch. <laughs> I'm, honey, you're the catch. You know what I mean? But coming into it, it's the coolest thing. When you become service-oriented like that, brother, it's... The best. Hell yeah. Yeah, top off. New, I'll finish this off on you. Coming this fall. Yes, sir. I love it. I love it. I think Pace does triple digit flips and he he runs a like creative approach through that. Pace is Pace is savage. But he's like he's like, I'm just out here riding a horse on my ranch that I got for a dollar. <laughs> and I'm like, fuck you, Pace. Dude, honestly, probably true though. I want a ranch. See, that's the best part about Pace's branding though. Same with Jerry Norton. Is people will take so much less to do a deal with them. And that's branding. Oh yeah. Just to do a deal with Pace. They could probably make ten grand off of an opportunity, but to be doing a deal with Pace Morby, to get that kind of, you know, that 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 you know, that self awareness to get in front of somebody like that, they're like, dude, I'll give it to you for free. Jerry Norton, he's made hundreds upon hundreds and of uh, thousands of dollars on assignment fees or flips, and the max that he gives you is ten thousand dollars. It's a check, it's a big check for ten grand and you get to meet be able to meet Jerry Norton. People will take from a 40,000 assignment just to get to a 10,000 just to be able to get in a room with Jerry Norton. And I think that is phenomenal. But the be- And the beauty of that is that it's phenomenal for both ends. Oh, my God. Like, it's such a win-win. Yeah. Content, you know? content, it's content, like, content. Yeah. It goes back to people recognizing the value of paying for knowledge, paying for, mm-hmm. you know, learning from somebody that has true expertise in a yeah. field, right? We have people that go to school and they pay... Fifty, hundred thousand dollars, and they get you know consumed by student loan debt yeah. to Calls get this type for, of for shams, man. Yeah, 
Go to Biobita University. Go to Biobita University. I'll get you a degree for free. <laughs> Unless you're a doctor. You can only be my doctor if you go to school. Don't go to I won't pay you money <laughs> unless you go to school. No, but um, yeah, it's it. You know, people need to recognize that for sure. So Love it's a. Uh, no, we're in a good industry, man. We're blessed. God, we're very so blessed, blessed to be in an industry that we can obtain, you know, long-term wealth for our families, mm-hmm. provide for our families, and at the same time, have a great fucking time. Homie. Have a yes. great fucking time. Dude, it's a Thursday yesterday. I had one of my, my community members come down, wanted to take me out to lunch. And I'm like, yeah, you know, of course. Came on down, drove a couple hours. We ended up going to lunch and then found out he was a whiskey guy. Had some whiskey, bought me a nice whiskey. And all of a sudden, his wife's getting his hair done or her hair done. We come in. I was like, you know what, baby? It's a Thursday. It's like 3 p.m. You know, bring the baby over. Go to a winery. Went to one of our wineries. Then we wine hopped to his winery. And I'm like, it's a fucking Thursday. You know, we're just over here enjoying it, and that is the liberty that you can get to. But the thing is, that's not every day. And this is my thing. This is a big thing for me is I give myself days like that, but I have a battle rhythm, brother. Like, I treat my work hours as if I was still in the service and you need to, right? Some people can't disassociate the two. Because you have freedom of liberty to do what you want does not mean that you can do what you want. There's still Mm -hmm. work to get done. Mm. And I see a lot of people failing that. You know, one check does not mean anything, right? How many do you have lined up, right? Dollars on the door. That's all I give a shit about. 100%. And so to identify that, you know, I think that is huge where people find the, find the liberty of entrepreneurship. And they're like, look, I can, do, I can do whatever I want. I can get a business credit card to max out a business credit card. You know what I mean? I have an extensive buyer's list, even though it's just a Facebook post. I have, you know, it's like, no, you, you have none of that, man. You know, do the back end work. You know, you need to be able to have the Oz behind your wizard, you know, and you got to be able to focus on what's important. And that's being able to buckle down and fucking do the goddamn thing. Fuck yeah, that, bro. For real. I want to make sure I wrote that right. Did you say because you have the liberty to do what you want does not mean you... I'll tell you right now, I never know what I say I mean, sometimes. you do what you want. My <laughs> team does that all the time. My team always says, yeah, they, 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 they say, say yeah, they say, they, they say pin because whenever I'm recording, they're like pin because I'll write it down. Yeah, I was but say, I I'm love gonna, that. I'm you gonna, love something I said, I'm going to have to watch that. Yeah. I'll, I'll rewatch it. I appreciate that, man. But it's just, it's huge. And you have to have, you, you have, to have that accountability. And I think accountability is crucial. And I hate when people... Do not strive for perfection because the only way to, to, to reach excellence is striving for, for perfection. For strive sure, for perfection, brother. perfection, reach excellence. You know surround I mean? yourself with people that yeah. do that. I don't want to fucking work out, bro. But then I got this fucker yeah. out here, like, looking Dude. Like, wham, yeah. walking around shit. our house. You can't be like, on my wife's feet sometimes. Yeah, you know, I'll be like, what are you doing? She's like, nothing. I'm like, I'm like you, can't, you can't follow Lewis. That you can't follow Lewis. <laughs> Dude, it's so true. I actually had a mentor one time because I came from the Marines kind of ripped, right? And yeah. they were like, bigger pockets, bigger waist. I'm like, yeah, right. And I'm like, I'm a chubby fuck now, man. <laughs> What the hell, dude? My wife's like, you're, but I love you. I'm like, you're the problem, dude. My wife just cooking great, making me happy. I'm like, fuck. But you know what? I'm like, you know, I'm a dad. We're going to Hawaii, and I'm like, I wish I could be a little better. But I'm yeah, going to Hawaii, right brother. Here. You know? Yeah, it is what it is. Yeah. But <laughs> no, no excuse, by the way. I just said accountability. I'm like, yeah, but yeah. I'm a dad. You know, it doesn't matter. It's so true, dude. Uh, you, you look good, brother. You, you give good. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. I think... Um, yeah, I think I think that's absolutely crucial. I think the accountability piece is huge. And honestly, B players, you know, will hire C players. So that's why your whole team needs to be A's. Right? Yeah, you for know? real. And, and I think that a lot of people get into real estate so that they can make that one deal and then go to the beach for, you know, a couple months or yeah. for the rest of their lives. Yeah. But that and that's honestly one of the reasons I started. Actually the main reason. But what like if you're doing it right and if you're treating your brain right, if you're studying, if you're always growing, learning new things, what you'll notice is as you progress through the journey, that isn't the goal anymore. No. 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 You'll you be in that position it. by focusing on that the act- actions, yeah. right? Yeah. The goal is one thing, and then you focus on the actions that will lead to that goal. So you'll naturally be in that position yeah. if you focus, work hard, do all the things. But then you don't even want to do that. Dude, it's if so you're true. doing it right, you don't want to do that. Not goals. And and the day that you decide to retire is the day that you start to die as a man. That's what I found. Dude, me preach, I have dude. Two things on that. I was talking with Brandon Turner uh, one, one time. Little name drop, right? Yeah, there, I was right? going to say. With Brandon Turner, and he was casually. great. Uh, it, Brandon, was, uh, it was getting in front of some great innovations. You know, the community ended up making a little over seven figures gross, right, on deals. And I told him, I said, now if I make this, I'll be okay with this. And he goes, okay. So you're focused on what you want to make to be okay with it. He goes, but what? You know, how much? How much you, can you lose to be okay with it? And I'm like, damn. 
Like, how much could I? Like, if I had a down quarter, how much could I lose and be okay? How much could I be sturdy with it? And that's the difference between being rich and being wealthy. Like, you know, and, and coming into that, I'm like, wow, this dude has thousands of doors. Mm -hmm. So he could lose a thousand houses to the market and still be okay, right? Where are we? You know what I mean? So it's like, stop focusing on looking over the fence and start mm -hmm. identifying that you need to build a better foundation for you. Yeah. And I'm like, that was huge, man. That was huge. And then I end up to your point one time in regards to the 70,000 to making 35,000. Dude, mm -hmm. my wife told me one thing the other day and it was gonna be a little over a six figure for the team, right? It was like a team thing and it was a novation and I was pissed. I was avidly fucking pissed. It was like $86,000 and I was in the car. My wife was, and my daughter was in the car and I'm like, just, I'm heated, right? Because I know where I, where it should have been, but because of seller concessions, yada, yada, they ended up threatening not to close all this stuff. And I was mad at $86,000 that was gonna be net to the team. And my wife literally looked at me, she goes, who are you, right? And I'm like, well, you know, yada, yada. She goes, you're always stretching for the next race. Why don't you ever hold your trophy up on ones that you just won? I'm like, oh my God, it's so true. Like I wow. am, like it's the next it's marathon. Like quarter. it doesn't matter, right? I'll go across the finish line. I have $86,000. I should be able to be like, I have 86 grand. I'm over here like done stretching. I need to get to Fuck 150, it. you know? And it's yeah. like, dude, what are you doing? Hold that trophy up a little bit, right? We're going 100%. to dinner, talk about it. Tell me about that deal. And it was a great self-reflection moment, right? Where it's like you get so caught up where numbers like that don't become reality because you know where you want to be. We break through ceilings, but sometimes, man, looking around the room that you're renting out, it's pretty fucking nice. You know what I mean? So I think that was a really That's good so thing. That's so important. Yeah, it's Cause, huge, Because you do like a certain amount one month, like 100,000, and then you're pissed that it wasn't yeah. 200,000. Not my quarterly goal. Yeah, yeah, exactly, man. And it's like, if you just sit back and be like, wow, like, this time, your first two deal was thirty five hundred dollars. Yeah, imagine what you guys are doing now. Yeah, imagine yeah, what really. that Lewis would have been like. That Jesse, you know what I mean? No, and and I love the point that you said, like the Brandon said about how much are you willing to lose. Trust. But I think that was su like such an important thing. Like when I went started this, I was like, right, this is how much money I have. Mm -hmm. I'm willing to lose all of it. Yeah, like I've got us. If I lose everything right now, I'll be fine. And I went into that, and then that deal that we were talking about earlier, we lost like 150 grand on that. Yeah. And damn. But it's weird though, because <laughs> I, I have a, <laughs> right. But we're here today. Yeah. And we it's, have a a podcast room. it's a weird we feeling. A, damn right you do. You got a beautiful yeah. dog over here. Under oh your yeah. Hand. Big up Queenie. Queenie. Um, but the weird feeling is, is like, I just don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like that I lost that. Yeah. Because some people would literally like stop and like brother, easy. it's just they're just yeah. numbers on a piece of paper, and it it's like I just don't give a fuck just because like the faith that I have and the vision it's like that is irrelevant. Exactly, it's like loving the vision and loving the work. Like back yeah. to what we were saying earlier, it's like truly loving the process. I know when I was getting into entrepreneurship, like you got to love the process. I was like. I thought y'all were like, we got to love the money. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Like, I'm going to love the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love suffering. <laughs> Wait, what, what are you talking about? But then, I, I mean, it just, it really becomes that. Like you love the process. Brother. You love what you're doing. I know Jordan Peterson said it once where he was like on the margaritas or going on a beach, you know, you're going to make a hundred K on a thing and you're going to go to the beach and you're going to be done. Jordan Peterson's like, how fucking many days in a row can you sit at a beach and drink margaritas? Oh my god, so, so true. Five days are gonna go by and you're gonna be like, what the yeah. fuck am I my doing? My max is eight, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I could do eight. Maybe I can do more than five days. But no, but the, the point is the same. It's like, dude, you, I love what you said. That that when you retire is the day that you start dying. Yeah, dude. Yes, that is so 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 damn true, man. And it was something we say in the Marine Corps: is being comfortable with being uncomfortable. Right, mm -hmm. like that's the thing. I don't want to call, announce the process. And you got to be comfortable with your process because then you get. I get people come to my office, my agent outreach coordinator, my project manager. I have seven acquisitions now. I got my operations manager. They come in with issues because I'm a firefighter. Gary Vee says it best. You just you entrepreneurship. You put out fires. When they're in my office and it's before nine, they go. I'm like, oh. Here's fucking, yo, okay, what do we got? Yeah. We have a leak in our $2.8 million right you now. Hey, you know, cash for keys, they don't want to sign, they want 5000 They want all this, and you realize, you go, these are. what are we willing to do? 
right? And so coming in front of those situations, I have to love being able to solve that because 100%. they look at me to be able to be even keel. And I, by the way, I love being even keel. I love being that focal point. I love being where the rubber hits the road because I fucking love making money in this industry, dude. hundred oh, percent. Yeah. I think yesterday I, I was uh, working like after work with, with my girl at a coffee shop. I was like, man, today was one of those days where every call I had, like the deal after that call was going to work or it wasn't. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I was like, <laughs> but every one of them fucking worked and it was a fucking great day. Yeah. And even if it wouldn't have gone that way, we would have figured it out. Right? right. Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's, that, it's that mindset. Yeah. And I think the, the beauty of it working out is just like, it's just bonuses. Yeah. Because you love the process. You love what yeah. you're doing. So true, you man. know that you're just you're you're passionate about what you're doing you're you know that you're doing something every day that's your appetite baby exactly that's the appetite bro. that you have man and what we're doing every day it's like we're, it's not like we're screwing people over it's like it's a win-win for everybody oh, yeah and which is such a again such a cliche statement but it's beautiful to be in real estate i love that story you gave about your first innovation where truly it's like it's a perfect example of how the seller was able to obtain what he wouldn't have been able to obtain. You were able to discover something that was going to just propel you into yeah. the next 10 years, 20 years of your life. Something that was going to help you grow a culture, a community of people that were passionate about this and that just wanted to be involved and that wanted to play a role in it. And so, man. I want to go run a fucking marathon, man. Dude. Yes, baby. I love that. Hell dude. yeah, For real. And to feed off of what you said, dude. What, what did you say again when the day that you um, retire is the day that you start to die? Yeah, as a yeah. man, for sure. As yeah. a man. And then I, I have one as well that my gunny ended up telling me when it came down to legacy. Because I told him I was leaving the Marine Corps and I was going to pursue this. And he goes, hey, the Marine Corps 30 years is a great legacy. And I go, I know, but I want to build a great legacy for my family. He goes, always remember this. You're going to have choices on your journey. He goes, a man dies twice. And he goes, the first time a man dies is the last time a breath leaves his body. Then he's dead. The second time is when the last person speaks your name into existence. And he goes, so if you're going to identify a legacy, make sure your great, great, great grandchildren know who the fuck you are. Give me chills. Dad. And I was like, oh, my God, dude. It was so beautiful. That's where your why comes from. I do yeah. it for my family. I want to be on an oil painting in some 8,000 yeah. <laughs> square foot mansion, you know, with <laughs> my great, 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 great yeah. grandkids. And they're like, man, why is daddy so rich? You go. That fucker no. right there, dude. I want to be that guy, dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so when I heard that, I was like, damn, Gunny. That was that was real. So you think about it. You go, like, how, what am I going to do that's everlasting, right? Because right now, what we're building is what we're building. But, man, this is going to last way. It's way bigger than us. 100%. Once you give purpose, you know, over a profit, you're going to be able to make some money. 100%. 100%. And that's what a lot of people made the mistake, isn't it? They just focus solely on the money. Mm -hmm. Right. But how they much don't... money can we get to before we don't? have to worry about anything after that yeah. yeah instead of worrying about the work itself and how you're going to build upon that exactly the, the, the one big payout that they can never have to work again yeah yeah it's yeah gross when it's the work that brings you the passion like we're both huge star wars fans oh stop and mm -hmm. and, and you know <laughs> i actually created our own like sith names and he is darth iracunda which in latin means passion means big passion. oh yeah yeah passion yeah, 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 yeah passion yeah, yeah. <laughs> interesting that you guys both darth, have sith is that, names. What is that what your wife calls you dude my <laughs> wife calls me many things no. <laughs> but uh she he actually made me a shirt and my wife wears it all the time still is like 10 years old and yeah that's what darth it's called Uricunda, it's latin for passionate because he like it doesn't matter what he's doing Doing, whatever he does, he's passionate about. Mm -hmm. Fuck, I don't have a sit name. <laughs> <laughs> we'll Mate. make you one, brother. He's yeah, the best dude. at it. Make make Jesse a sit name, baby. Yeah, absolutely. Hell yeah. So, in regards to your actual buyer beats community, mm -hmm. right? Say if someone out here, hopefully, is you know starting in real estate or wanting to start in real estate, why would they join your community? Okay. That's a great question. And I actually get this question honestly every day in my DMs, right? You're an agent, you're a wholesaler, you're a fix and flipper, right? You're an investor when you're coming in front of it. All I want to do, buyer beater is a novation based dispositions company. Does that mean that all we do is novations? Our mantra is going deep in novations, but we focus on complementary real estate. All of my rentals are sub twos. I focus on seller carries. My biggest thing is to give you more tools for your tool belt when it comes down to ident identifying approaches for your sellers. I want to teach you not to corner your sellers in a certain situation to where they feel like that's the only that's the only opportunity they have that 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 they have to take that handle they have to do this no 
I'm gonna give you five or six doors to walk through. I'm gonna hold your hand through every single one of them and I'm gonna identify an approach that's gonna be more beneficial for you and for us, right, together. So buyer beater, the name itself is to allow you to become a, you know, to be able to beat out other people's offers due to the fact that you're gonna provide a solution that's gonna be more beneficial for your homeowner. So that way when they look at you, they go, wow, well, you're here to do more than just buy my home. You're here to do more than provide a service. You're here to obviously be able to help me through a situation. Mm -hmm. And that's a big thing. And, and how do they get paid? So um, when it comes down to buyer beater, let's just say baseline, right? You're a, you're a wholesaler. What I always say right now, most of your audience is probably, you know, wholesalers, people that are getting into real estate investing, right? Um, if it's a wholesale deal, you should do the wholesale deal, right? Mm -hmm. Because you can get paid within 21 days, right? Your due diligence is good. You can get in front of 10, 20, 50, whatever thousands of dollars that you can get in front of. My whole approach with my company is to focus on taking the deals where you built good rapport with your homeowners. They like you. It's a good lead. But Becky, the seller, wants $40,000 more, right? Mm -hmm. That's a dead wholesale deal, but that's a phenomenal novation deal. Right, so we want to be able to operate as a creative finance department that's gonna benefit you and your company. So we're not stepping on your toes. These are just your dead opportunities. So the moment that you get in front of it, where you're trying to offer a certain amount, they want a little bit more, and you know that that's outside any investor's buy box, you just say simply, you know what? That might be a little bit more than what I can offer, but I do have great news. I work directly with my creative finance department. They've actually approved you for looking at what's called our equity protection program. Right, and that's something I would like for you to get on the phone with because I'm sure they can be a right around your price. Now, if they're gonna be open to your price, I want you to be open to their terms. And if that's the case, we can get to the finish line together, right? From there, all you do is have that warm mm. handoff. You pitch that out, you get on the phone with my acquisitions with that seller, we come in and close a deal on behalf of you. And we have two ways, right? You and I, you, we've done the, the way where you guys are credible in the sense where it's like, hey, we'll bring in some funding, we'll bring in the deal. My biggest thing is if you find the opportunity, we will fund it. So if you bring me a novation, we will fund it. We've put in $6,000 to a deal. We've put in $160,000. The most mm -hmm. I put into a property is $298,000. It doesn't matter. It just matters on obviously when it comes down to close of escrow, we take on the risk and the liability. If you bring us a novation deal, we attach you to 25% of the net proceeds, right? If you just, if we bring in all the funding. Now, a lot of wholesalers, which I've identified, is people in our community. We're about 300 strong now of avid, you know, around 18 submissions a week. People are really coming in front of it. Great questions, amazing community. So if you guys want to be able to join, I highly recommend you guys becoming a member because these people are popping off and they want money quick, right? They're wholesalers, right? These are yeah. dead deals. So I could attach, you guys have the stomach and you guys have the, the, the manpower to be able to go three, four months without getting paid because novations take 90 to 150 days. Yeah. Welcome. Sellers, if they want their higher price, they need to be open to you buying their patients. Hence what I do. Yeah. If they want to be able to close quickly, welcome to a wholesaler price because we can get you in front of that lot. You can't have your cake and eat it too, right? Exactly. You cannot. So when you identify the approach, you push it over. If you give me a deal and it's an equity split opportunity for innovation, I pay you $5,000 up front. Right, doesn't matter what we make, but you can give me four a month. You can make 20 yeah. grand a month with me. I don't give a shit, right? Yeah. But the thing is, if you wanna be attached to the nuance of Novations, you can make 25% net. If you would like to get paid out quicker, which a lot of people do, they go, hey Trev, here's a new Novation. We end up going, here's $5,000, right? And we get in front of great opportunities that way. And by the way, you could do both. It yeah. doesn't matter. As long as you're a community member, we're over here trying to make everybody win. But so, dude, I mean, shout out to, to buyer beaters. I mean, I think the a big problem is like with the wholesalers is they are so in that I want money quick mindset. Yeah. Like they get into wholesaling because of that. It's like, I think I really would love for wholesalers to realize the value of first off specializing in something and then having a relationship with somebody that specializes in something specializes in something because sure we're in a position now where we could probably say certain novations that involve rehab you know we could just do the novation solely ourselves yeah but it's like our focus is wholesale and when you have a direct focus it allows you to grow so much quicker and you know if we have a novation deal the first person i'm calling okay. is trev you know relationship because, based exactly perfect. why yeah. the hell am i gonna fucking waste way more time on something that my brother specializes in yep. and that I know he's going to have the highest probability of success in. And, you know, sure, the, the mindset I think that peeps, keeps people, people from going that route is, oh, I'm not going to make as much Scarcity. as I could make. Scarcity mindset. Like, Scarcity dude, mindset, dude, bitches. I just Get tell you right now. Here, and by the way, I'm just, I'm over here, you know, venting. But the, the, the big thing I see is 
Remember, these are dead deals. Exactly, bro. You're making nothing on this. You made me think about this when you said that. Yeah. I was like, oh, the fact that these wholesalers have a dead deal yeah, like, and that they turn money hungry. It's like, dude, dude you were about to not make yeah, anything. Zero. You zero. have somebody that's coming in and saying, I have all the resources to make help you make and money you on this. all my money to do it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Dude, it comes down to it. I get this all the time. And they go... They go, okay, right, you know, we end up moving this forward. Some of them who we've paid, I've paid out 20s of thousands of dollars of people who've never even closed a wholesale deal because Novations, they get in front of them, they go, oh, wait, yeah, 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 I, I work with a company that can do that. Boom, here's five grand. They're like, wow. Dude, so when it comes down to that, I agree with you wholeheartedly, man. And so when it comes down to the dead opportunities of these deals, to be able to transition the entire liability, all of the insurance, the back end of what we have, yes, welcome to being able to be congruently working with me, right? You provide yeah. the opportunity, I move the opportunity. Now, if you want to provide half of the reno cost and we provide half, that's skin in the game. We'll go 50-50, right? Now, it all boils down to the to, to the wholesalers, and I, I get that all the time. And at first, I was upset. At first, I was like, maybe we should. And I'm not going to lie. Then I come down to it, and now we start doing, you know, 76-plus deals, and I go, no. Like, I know what the, I know what I provide, yeah, right? I'm, like, I know what I'm here to do. They would be making no money. Yeah, zero. You know what they could do? And I tell them all the time. I say, hey, right, you know what you could do? You could not do a deal with me. You might not know how to do an ovation, but the thing is, you could also just let that collect cobwebs in your CRM and yeah. you give them a call in six months and hope their situation still sucks ass. But likely they've already you know? done an ovation yeah, with me. they've so. probably already done it, you know? Yeah. And so identifying that, my whole thing is a compliment, wholesaler's business. And by the way, realtors, same way. Realtors, they go in this property, right? One thing that I that I want to mention is realtors, I, I absolutely love working with realtors. You're a realtor, brother, right? Yeah. Realtors, when they have a great creative mindset, is phenomenal, but... Realtors always say they have a fiduciary to their seller. They need to have a fiduciary to the seller, but they always have a fiduciary to their pocket, okay? They do. That's fact. How can I benefit realtors? Well, you can list a shitty home that's gonna sit for 90 days, that's vacant, where you're gonna get low ball offers and seller credit, but the thing is you don't wanna get in front of the seller and tell them that he wants too much, so you just kinda cower down and sign a listing agreement to put this on the market and see if the market's gonna be optimistic, or you could do innovation. Realtors right now have always gotten, we get a bunch of submissions from realtors. They walk in, they go, damn, if this thing had 40 grand, it could be worth like another 80. Where are that 40 grand? Just go in front of your seller and go, you know what? I could list this. I had a full commission. I can get this up there. It's going to sit for a while. But actually, I work with a creative finance department. They'll come in here. They'll just, they'll, they'll fully fund everything. Why don't we just make this thing 2024 turnkey? Any appreciation they create through the renovation, they'll keep as their fee. They'll take on the risk, but at the same time, you're not going to have to pay my fee. They'll pay your listing fees and your buyer's fees and your closing costs. They'll cover that too. It'll sell probably within six weeks, including the renovation time when this is going to sit for three months. Yep. Sellers go, that's not what, what do they say? Where's the catch? Yeah. Right? There's no catch, man. If you can mm -hmm. pitch it correctly, you can get in front of a lot of opportunities. I'm telling you right now, and that's exactly what we're here to do. Compliment 100%. you and your business. Like, am I on a TV show? Is this yeah, a TV yeah, I know, show? I know. Yeah. 100%. Where's my tele? Yeah, exactly. Literally. Man. Exactly, dude. So everybody wins. So obviously I was on your Zoom yesterday mm -hmm. and you mentioned like start making 10 calls a day, right? And you'll get in front of So how many if someone's starting new, right? A realtor or a wholesaler how many calls do they need to make to like the certain type of property whether that's been sitting on the market mm -hmm. for 60 days or motivated to sell or whatever how many calls do you think they need to make to just pass the hand off 11 11 calls it is on average what we get our kpis key performance indicators which mm -hmm. you need to track it shows that 11 on market properties you're going to identify an agent who's up to be able to speaking to us to get in front of the right opportunity for their homeowner Okay. So you, as somebody with no experience, can call on market properties. You can go to Redfin, 60 days on market, right? Fixer uppers that are vacant and you call them and you stumble upon your words and you try to get in front of them saying, hey, I, I can actually, what if I fully renovate this thing and I give your seller the exact amount they want and then you relist it for a higher amount. You do that 11 times, you're going to get in front of $5,000. Dude, okay. which, which is so funny that people overlook the value of that yeah. over wholesaling because of the fact that it might be 90 days yep as opposed so, yeah. to the quick sell on well, wholesaling the five thousand exactly. dollars is the instant payout right five thousand instant payout so but if we're gonna make 80 on it you get 25 percent net so, you could make 9 11 but here's the thing you funnel it brother 
you know, do yeah. a couple a month, wait, do it for three months. Mm -hmm. And as you start doing it, guess what? You, you build a couple, three months, you know, three months passes, one closes, now you got a closing. Now you got a closing. You are funneling your own, you're building residual business when you start utilizing them that way. So what you're telling me is if someone makes 11 calls and gets connected with a realtor on each one, spends 10 minutes talking to them, which is 100 minutes, so just over an hour a day, they when those start to close, they can essentially make $5,000 a day. Yes. Or more if they take the 25% equity split. Lewis, that's exactly what I'm telling you. Yeah. So what you're saying is that the people that are in your community, if they take action, which is very small action, Extremely, by the way, yeah. Yeah, they trust. can become essentially financially free. Easily. We have people, and I'm telling you right now, multiple that we close with who, I, who, I, who are just walking testimonials of what they're doing because you don't need to do anything above and beyond what you're already, what you're already doing. Just add this into your tool belt, right? And I have people that jump in. My tattoo artist jumps in. He's like, I want to make some money before my extra, b before my wedding. Boom, right? You have mm -hmm. people who want to come in. Then they realize this might not be for everybody, but the, the but putting yourself in a, in, a, in a focal point to get in front of the right opportunities is worth five thousand dollars for right? sure. Yeah. And then you'll realize if you end up liking it or not. You end up realizing if you have the appetite for it. You end up realizing if this is for you. But then that's what we have. My entire business last year was conglomerated from dead deals. I mean, we have direct to seller, but we didn't do direct to seller for 18 months. Made over a million dollars from dead wholesale deals and on market leads oh, yeah. right away. Just from them going, that's kind of cool. Yeah, let me let me take action. Let me call. Mm -hmm. And then identifying these and guess what? That agent has a lifeline of about four opportunities. That agent, excuse me, if they like you and they, they understand it, because agents are sometimes old dogs, new tricks. But if they like you, they're like, holy shit, this one might not work because the seller sucks, but I have three more or I have one more. I'm actually going to a listing appointment tomorrow. It's my cousin's. I fucking hate him, but his property is vacant. It could probably work. Can you just do a new roof? Can you just, now you have agents. If you call 11 agents a day for a week, you can probably have on average four or five agents a month giving you a deal. That's another key, the just li doing lifetime it. value of, lifetime a, of a relationship. Lifetime value of right? realtor relationships, man. You're not only calling Huge. 11 realtors to get one, mm -hmm. but you're also now creating a pipeline yep. of yep. realtors yep. that are going to be – the one that works out or the one that understood your pitch is going to eventually come around and be like, holy shit, this would be a great deal to make it's, for me to make more money with it's them. It's like a light bulb, and they go, well, can this – you know?" and then all of a sudden they're intrigued. How? Right? And then you end up identifying that where you're the subject matter expert. Actually, you're not. We are. You funnel us the deals. We take care of it. You're the middleman of saying, hey, here's an opportunity. You shoot it. We'll fucking slam dunk that bad yep. boy. You know what I mean? That's yep. the thing. You alley-oop us. Yeah. That's all we're looking for is alley-oops. It's, it's a relationship relationships thing you love to talk about where it's like you, you – connect somebody with somebody else that actually has that value or that does that service or can do this thing, you automatically have the same value as that person. Mm -hmm. So you, by being in relationship with that realtor, you're giving, or that person that connected with the realtor, you're giving them the same value as you who is killing it in the novation yeah. game. So it's like, you want to be that guy that provides that solution. Well, guess what? Now you are because we're connected. And I'm willing to stand behind you if you bring me somebody that's open to this opportunity. 100%. Dude, I'll tell you right now, multiple people. You know, I could say Brian. I can say Drake. I could say Joe. I can say Tyler. I can say Christy. I can name you multiple people and tag them that have made twenties to $50,000 in the last four or five months just by giving us novations. And it changes their life. And then guess what they want to do? The, and the best way to be able to, you know, Alex Ramosi says it best, right? Give, 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 and you will receive. All I want to do is give you education, give you free content, give you everything I need to be, or everything you need to set us up for success. Because if my plate's full, yours is overflowing, right? That's a big thing for me. I want to come in abundance, and that's what I think Buyer Video University does. Is Hell that we, yeah. we, we 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 give you education in abundance. I mean, what's more abundance than you having a dead deal that makes zero dollars and it now being worth money? Yes. Mm -hmm. You can make a dollar. You make more money. You make but it, I agree. Ex exactly. And but you're honestly, making five thousand. On average, and I'll real quick, and I'll toot that horn, but dude, if you're gonna wholesale Chino, right? What 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 would you guys wanting to make for Chino for a wholesale if you were to wholesale it? Probably like fifty or sixty. Yeah. And then you end up making eighty plus, right? And we would have had to get it for like 
What did we pay that? Exactly. 400 we paid so, her. So the thing is, what was your wholesale offer at? Like 330 So you gave your seller... Seventy-five thousand more dollars and made thirty thousand more on top of an assignment fee. Exactly. What are people doing? Well, no, I mean technically it would have been a dead deal, right? Because yeah. we wouldn't have been at the amount that they needed. Exactly. It's like it would have been fifty, sixty based on getting in at this price, but we wouldn't have got in at this yeah. price, right? It so it's is, like yeah. maybe a wholesale fee if we understood the novation route, like because then that's a route now that we go as well as wholesale. There's and like, I love that. Okay, man. we can set up deals that. as wholesale and we can move them as wholesales. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, like that's also an option. And so it's like just adding to your knowledge, adding to your understanding. And so, because I, I was on the phone yesterday with somebody that wants this um, this property, the one that we're looking at in yeah, Arkansas. Yeah. And um, they want it really bad. I've been calling me every day. And they're aware of a novation. So they know that I have it set up on a novation. And I was on the phone with him. I was like, look, dude, I was like, unless you can get me a 20K fee, I'm just going to novate it with our partner yeah. that we're, you know, like, partnered with and we're yeah. going to bring some capital they're going to bring some capital we're going to be 50 50 so unless you can give me 20k on top of getting it as an ovation i might as well do it with him yeah man i'll tell you right now you know so it, it, it cre also adds to your your status your value again right? negotiations all that you adds know? to your abundance right 100 percent and that's any, a key any wholesaler any wholesaler that reaches out to you and gets connected with your team now has that in their arsenal they now have another thing that they can use to negotiate terms, to negotiate offers. Game changer. Total game changer. That's very true. So what I guess what's the vision for the community? Like ten years down the line, where where do you see it Ooh. at the size, your in house buyer beta <laughs> team? Like what what do you see? What oh what can God. you feel? take over the world? <laughs> Look yeah. I know, yeah. I honestly I love looking at people who lead by example. I say the same thing every time and I've met him. He loves my model and my vision, but it's the hard work that will get me there. His pace has cultivated such an insanely genuine community where only way that you build up is by building with others. Mm. And I really want that. Mm -hmm. And he focuses on sub two uh, drastically, right? Very yeah. sub two, very very generational wealth. Mine is very much a complementary approach for wholesalers, but I want to be that. Like I want to, and the, the best news is, man, I was doing Zooms by myself and I would have my team jump on just so I can have six people to show up while I talk to nobody for an hour. Now to have 30 plus people stay on for hours, multiple oh, yeah. times a week, we're at 300 people plus, 10 to 15 posts a day, 10 new community members. My biggest thing is to have it be so self-sustainable that they can practice it themselves and find others to be able to emulate and educate within my community, man. To be the pinnacle of that, I just wanna use myself as a stepping stone to make other people higher. Like that's a big thing for me. Oh man. yeah, love huge, that. Huge, huge for me. And if I see that, man, it's just, if I can help operate on and highlight what they're doing, cause that's the thing, we are, a, I'm just a creative finance department, right? Like you, know, you don't need to know how to do novations. The moment that your seller goes, uh, what does that mean? You go, that's a great question, Brenda. I'd love to get you on the phone with my creative finance department. That's your line. You pass it to me and we do all the dirty work, right? And so to identify that and get in front of that, I want to be able to teach, educate, innovate, and dominate, baby. No, dude, love that. Yeah, and bro, you're, you're doing it right because that's literally- Thank you. I just said it without even, I mean, I didn't think about it that way, but it is what it is, right? bread is in the pudding you add value to a wholesaler that didn't have that value before yes. you get connected with buyer beater you now have that in your arsenal and you're now exactly. a wholesaler that can say hey you know what this doesn't work yeah but we got this great option and because we're those guys dude it, we're those guys oh yeah yeah Brent, no fifty thousand. by the way i knew that was too low okay i've already talked to my creative finance department they've approved you for forty thousand dollars more don't worry okay? we're good don't worry now if you want to move within 21 days i'm here but if not, you're ready to go. Let me pass you on the page because she's ready to be able to take that call. Like as a wholesaler, why the fuck would you not yeah, want that, dude? That's exactly. amazing. You're Shout like, out yes. page. Shout out page. Basically, Basically queen, queen, baby. <laughs> it, it gives you an option. It gives you like a, like basically a reason to have your offer rejected. Oh my God. It told you anchor it to know that you're still, by the way, you are anchoring it to know that you still have a deal that's probably better than your wholesale deal. Wait, yeah. wait, wait. A but, lot of times significantly, dude, bro. I have people who are like, who say wholesale and they're like, yeah, you know, and they're like, 
fuck, you know, it's like, but I can make more money Dude. if I, you know, and it's like, what a, what a Chef. conundrum. What a, what an issue to have. I love that, man. You're, you're going to love this because I, I call it, we have our new acquisitions rep in the, in our, on our team, Johnny. Yeah. I call him yesterday. Is on, that me, Johnny? No, no, that's Mark. That's Mark. Mark is, yeah. yeah. Just, he, Mark is Mark's savage. Mark's like OG. He's, he's a, a savage. 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 When I came in, Shout out, he probably hears us. Dude's a killer. I, when I came in, I was like, that's a He's that's an a animal, guy. dude. He's Our an animal, realtor yeah. on this one that, that we just closed on, she's like, you stole this property. I'm like, we have a mark. <laughs> we have a mark. <laughs> we steal properties. But um, no, so on this Arkansas one that we're looking to innovate with you guys, uh, I'm talking to Johnny yesterday. I call him. I'm like, look, dude, the sellers just agreed to innovation. I was like, they only came down a little bit. They came down and they agreed to innovation. I was like, I can sell it as a novation for 8K. Yeah. We can get an 8K fee. We'll get paid now. I was like, but if I use Trev's team, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we're, you know, we're, we're making over 25K. I know, man. I was like, we, we do have to wait 90 days. I was like, I know this is like, it's going to be his first deal with the team, but I was like, Second. But we're, second deal. Second I was like, team, yeah. but we're making way more. So like, Dude, you know, it's, it's what just a, a perfect example it's of that. What a problem, man. Of like, yeah. Exactly. You know, we can I, make this, we can make way more yeah. doing this route. Yeah. And not only that, you create a much more beautiful experience for the seller, like yeah. you said, right? Dude, it is all customer service based. And I'm going to feed directly off of that because I get that same. What's what's your monthly amount worth, right? Because you can make 8K right now, you can make 25 now. So you're ba basically making 8,000 a month for three months, right? It just depends on when you want to get paid out. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a big thing. Like, just solidify yourself and look at the pattern of what would happen for a quarter for it to get paid out. But yeah, identifying that at the same at the at the same time, it really is putting us in a position to know what you want because you can tell me. You can tell me, hey, I just want this up front, that's totally fine, or I want this to be able to come out of it. And being able to have that choice, I think, has allowed a lot of people to know that there's longevity in this industry where it's like, hey, I do need some money up front for operations. Five grand should be able to be more than enough to pay for you know, you as a wholesaler for your m monthly marketing, right? And if it's not, then give me two deals and I'll cover your entire marketing. Mm -hmm. Or give me three, right? Depends on what you're doing. Yeah. So I, I love the fact that they get, the, I love the power dynamic for them to be able to choose, man. That's that's pretty cool, dude. No, for sure. I, I love that everything that you're saying, we can give true testimony to with yeah. our experience. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, for sure. Walking that home, by the way, that home was, that home was wild, bro. Oh yeah. That home was wild and that's pretty cool that we ended up doing that. That is, that is so cool. Went for over sure. asking. Went over you know asking what? by $30,000? Yeah. We listed it for, what did we list it for? Uh, seven something. Seven, 789 and we got we, 819. We were projecting 789, 790. We projected 730,000. We were okay with making like a hundred grand. Then we ended up, no, like like 80. And then we ended up yeah. listing it and it went 30,000 over asking. Yeah. Holy fuck. What's your realtor's name? Savage? Hector. Hector, shout out yeah. Hector. Shout out shout Hector. Hector. So, Homie is a 20 year just vet in the space, man. Yeah. And a players. Yeah, for Dwight sure, higher 100%. Players, for sure. Got to have your A team. Yeah. 100%. That's what you need as a realtor too. Mm -hmm. That's what and you need. The crazy thing is, right, all of this stemmed from networking. And relationships. Yeah, you came to my little wine meetup, man. Exactly. Yeah. That's where it all circles back to what? at the end That's of the crazy. day. That wine meetup in Temecula had no idea. Like, Jake, I know Jake followed you. Yeah. He was like, yeah, like, let's go to this, like, guy's meetup. His name's Trevor. I was like, oh, Trevor. Like, that's what such an American name. That's a disgusting name. <laughs> that's such an American <laughs> name. I was like, this guy is hate for Americans, bro. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm on no keychain ever with an ER. And I was like, okay, let's go. And then who would have thought, like, a beautiful thing would stem out of it? Like, right away, too. Ro I know. That was crazy. But that is the power of networking at the end of yeah. the day. And I know that you're an avid networker. Huge, huge. Zero I, networker, dude. Right. And one of our first like experiences together was going to WealthCon, a networking event. You've gone ahead and sponsored a WealthCon event. I Two, yeah. And you're sponsoring the next one, right? Mm -hmm. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to do that and what impact like it's having and going to have on your business like what's the reasoning behind that great question dude that's a good segue i will say wealthcon is ran by ryan pineda brian de villa right game changers in the space 
Yeah, they're huge. They want they run Wealthy Investor. They're massive. They're huge in Las Vegas. But the thing is, their networking events of thousands of people that come together is for the exact definition of what you want to be able to get out of why you go to an event. It mm -hmm. really is to be able to meet up with other people, benefit off of others' choices, and create such drive that when you come home, you're going to actually execute on it. And so when I went to the Vegas one, or no, uh, LA, yeah, right, to the LA one, I was just starting. I did Novations for years, right? So I want to preface that. I did Novations by myself for a while. Did a couple a quarter, made great money, and that's what took over my military you know, where I was like, you know, babe, like we're, we're doing good. I started teaching novations to people for five grand, 7,500 bucks, making this, these consulting fees. But the thing was, they always had issues with the nuance of the creative underwriting and everything. And so they would just end up paying me to just still hold their hand through it. And so I literally saw, close. yeah, I saw like where the, the, the hole was. And I was like, why don't I just create a team to do all of your innovations? That's literally where BioBeater yeah. came from. And so they were like, way better. Because the thing is, I don't want five grand or 10 grand up front. I want to make a hundred grand off you with 50 deals so that way you can make a shitload of money too. Exactly. And they loved it. And so as we d identified you know, the purpose of what we could do, that's when I, I had a call to action to have some of my people who I've done innovations with, they're in the all-star community of Ryan Panetta. I had no idea who Ryan was. Right, you look into him. Obviously, huge deal. Right, massive in the space. Brian Deville is his partner. Love him to death. He's actually he, he's a, he's a great guy. I was on his podcast, and he just really cares. Brian really cares. I haven't talked to Ryan too much. Um, and then coming into it, they knew at the event I started doing some interviews. Right, like I was trying to boost my social media, and it grew three or four thousand since uh, since uh, the event. But I would do funny games around there. And then when I started realizing, I'm like, you know what? Like, how do I become a part of this? And I asked Brian, I said, I want to do more. Like, what can I do more? And they said, be a big deal. And he was like, be a big deal. I was like, and you know, there's discouragement in that. Where I was with people and they were like, man, what does that mean? I'm like, that just means to be a fucking big deal. Like, yeah. I'm just going to be a big deal, yeah. right? So I'm just going to hit it harder. I'm going to do Fuck more. Yeah. I'm going to pay more for SEO. I'm going to put my, I'm going to boost my reels. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. And now... It is so cool to see that from that space, I have hundreds of people that come from the all-star community. I do all of the all, Ryan Pineda's all-star innovation deals. I do all of them with us. They've partnered with my company now. From that event to three events, I have now solidified me and my company to not only speak in the breakout rooms, then speak at his private office, but then to do all their innovation deals and become friends with them all because I leaned into what he said. A lot of people go, oh, fuck, that's, you know, what does that mean? How did, I just knew what it meant. I was like, I'm going to fucking do more, like way more. I'm going to do this. People are like, oh, am I not a big deal? Yeah, am I not a big it's deal? Like, yeah. no, shut the fuck yeah, up. Yeah, be a more. bigger deal. Yeah, be a bigger deal. So yeah. I ended up going into that, leaning into that. And it's so cool now that when I go to the events, right, hosting, we were the, uh, the executive sponsor of the event. I flew my entire team out, right? We flew private all the way down there, had an, an insane booth, ended up gaining over, you know, maybe 80 new members. We came into it. Now, every time that I go there, because of what they've been able to create, buyer beater, is a household name amongst their community, Come on. which is something when I came by myself with a fucking microphone and a videographer that I could barely afford, right? <laughs> I'm like, wow, you know? Hell All yeah, because man. I decided to lean into the adversity, dude. And be like, you know what? He's right. And it's so cool to see. Like, it's so cool to see. We're doing the April event. We're gonna be there. So if this is gonna go out, I'm sure by then, Firebeater is gonna be there. Definitely drive by is going to be there, dude. We will be there. Oh, yeah. And we're going to do a whole penthouse thing, right? And, and we're going to do just, we're just going to get involved with the community and just provide so much damn value. I want to be able to have everybody who goes to the events and who talks to me and Jesse and Lewis, I want them to just be drinking out of a fucking fire hose of knowledge, man. Come on. That's all I care about, dude. That's facts. They're going to get that from the, the speakers. They're going to get that from Ryan and Brian. They're going to get that through the vendors and from Buyer Beater. And to be able to do that is, a blessing and who would have thought I could do that in six months you know what I mean it's crazy it's crazy you've, it really you've is grinded crazy. it out I'm, I'm very proud thank you. you man cheers brother dude cheers. Try, well. and, and yeah, the, Tristan go get another one the, cr the crazy thing actually, is maybe you could can you grab can you grab another one yeah. grab my wallet brother same one sure so I appreciate you bro yeah.
Appreciate you, my guy. Over like right what the downstairs. six podcasts that we've done. Right downstairs. Right downstairs. I'm sure there's a 7 Eleven. Is that where you go? Or what? Yeah, Ralph's, Ralph's, Ralph's right across the street. Yeah. Grab my wallet. Use my card. So, thank you. The baby. six episodes that we've done, we've we've done like a few different, you know, subjects. But what I've just come to the realization of is success comes down to like multiple things, right? Habits, blah, 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 mindset, all the bullshit, not bullshit, but all the things that you hear everyone talk about. But what I've just like discovered is there's two main pointers. Number one, networking. Yes. Avid networking. Mm. Number two, delayed gratification. 100%. You need to be able to network with people, provide value not get that instant gratification, not take that 5K, like build yourself in. And if you can network, delay your gratification, network, delay gratification, (sighs) network, delay gratification, I don't know, but in five, 10 years, you'll be somewhere very remarkable. Dude, I love that you said that. And people look and they're like, man, you, dude, you got a team of rock stars. Let me tell you exactly how I met my team, right? My partner, who was my operations officer, Robert Bain. Fucking uh, love Robert. Legend. Give me shout guy, out. Baby. Shout I, out. Bro, my I, dog. I was hoping he'd pull up with you. Brother, I know. Every time I see you that know man's what, face, dude. Robert, and here's the, here's the thing about Robert. He is so analytical where he knows, he goes, he goes, that's a you thing, which means that I have to do a me thing, right? It's very, it's very counterproductive where it's like, hey, if you're going to do this, which I'm very forward facing, I'm very in front of the community, I'm very social media, but... My entire acquisitions, my operations, meeting performance, all the numbers and everything, Robert thrives in that. So when he goes, of course, he said, tell the boys I said, what's up? Of course, you know, Robert, he loves you guys, you know, but to identify that on a Friday, he is so strong willed. And this guy was a commercial agent that came into it that we ended up meeting at a party one time. Right. And there's the thing about networking, dude. Mm-hmm. You could be like, hey, what's up, man? Yeah, choose you. No, but you could be like, you know, hey, what's up, man? What brings you down here? You know, you identify yada, yada. Four years later, you know, there was another another friend that was involved. And here's the thing. I'm not going to go too deep into that, but we had a third partner mm-hmm. who unfortunately didn't have the same core values that we did. And one of the hardest things that you have to do as a business is understand if you want to grow because you got to be able to trim off, you know, some leaves that might not be, you know, too uh, beneficial for you and your company. And that will be the hardest thing that you ever do in your entire life. But it's going to put you in a position to know what's really important. So Robert and I knew what had to get done. We got it done. But him was through a networking party, right? Peter Valles, our yeah. project manager. Legend. Legend. Uh, I, legend. Yeah, legend. I ended up going to a WealthCon, my very first WealthCon, mm-hmm. very first WealthCon. He was at the bar. We both ordered the same beer. I stole his beer. He looked back and he goes, what the fuck are you doing? And I'm like, oh, so I just grabbed my beer. Did I spill on you? He goes, that's my beer. And I go, it's your beer. I was like, I bought this beer. We started talking. Next thing you know, five minutes later, we started discussing. And he wants to get into creative finance. I want to get into Airbnbs, right? He had 22 Airbnbs. I've done over 50 creative finance deals. Next thing you know, now we've done over 80 creative finance deals. And I own three Airbnbs with him. And we've merged roles. And now he he operates 19 deals at a time for me with Buyer Beater. And all of my Airbnbs are flown through him and his company. That is networking, dude. Oh, yeah. That is the power of networking. When it comes down to Hector, who's our president of Buyer Beater, he is our agent outreach coordinator, hmm. to be able to go into that, we've identified, I joined a gym that was fucking expensive. It was like this CrossFit gym because I made a bunch of money, and I go, I'm going to be the guy, right? And then I pull up, Hector's car is super nice. Hector Del Guys are real estate, Temecula Valley real estate. And I was like, fuck. You know what I mean? I was like, damn it. So we go in. His wife works there. He's high-fiving everybody, which can deter you. But I just leaned into that. And I said, fine. If I can't get them as clients, I'm going to get him as my best friend. We came in there, and now we close 20-plus transactions. You know, what we have. He's a number one realtor in Temecula. He just won Agent of the Year with us. Like It is a huge deal. And that is all just leaning into the power of networking, dude. Yeah. It is huge. So just to be able to go off of that when you go out, wow, you have an A-list team. It's because I tried to be able to, you know, create A-list talent, man. I know what I want and I'm gonna strive for excellence. 100%. And I'm gonna, I strive for perfection, I'm gonna reach excellence, dude. No, and we're trying to take notes from you because I think that's something going into twenty twenty four we've talked about a lot. Is like fuck coaching people up. Like I I'm yeah. not not in a bad way. Yeah, but like, you. you know, is it you get to a certain point with the business where you're like, dude, I need to bring in value, you know, I need to bring in people that are able to perform 
execute at the level at which we need to execute at the level at which we're providing the resources to execute and we're yeah. willing to be a part of right so no i 100 percent agree man and i think that's that's also a hard part about so you know, hard, business because you you always there's always that part inside of you but that the, wants to get that bring that person in you know like the the person that doesn't know anything i want to coach them up i want to I but you get to a point with business where you're like dude i need those fucking killers i need those people that know what they're saying on the phone you that do. can get what needs to get done and, done and here's the thing right you can do a bunch of walks and you can avoid the issue and you can know what's really rotting your business and you can talk about it or you could be about it and those are two completely different topics and that's 100%. so true and sometimes there's like an in-between stage where you're talking about it and you're like kind of like you know you need to do it but like you're trying not to like is there anything we can do to avoid yeah. it and that's something that happened to me when i was in england i was like there was a problem i knew it had to be dealt with and i was trying to spend time with my family but i couldn't focus yeah i couldn't focus on yeah. them which as a like as a person that you know works hard like a lot of days hours and especially like i i only see my family in england a couple times a year i yeah, need to true. be focusing year, on them. if anything right and the fact that i couldn't that's when i was like this needs to be dealt with it's hard man marcus aurelius this is what robert tells me all the time marcus aurelius i'll be doing because you know i'm so forward facing I had all this shit and you know then you start complaining about things you have to do even though it's great things things that yeah. you would you know that you that you yearn for growing up or you know getting in the business and he's always like what's in the way becomes the way right so get out of the way real quick identify it. what's in the way becomes the way and so i look at it and i take it one thing at a time what's in my way right now my emails okay great what's in the way right now a talk with my whatever Okay, great, take it. And so I move it out of the way and then all of a sudden you start figuring out that you're pretty goddamn close to where you wanna be, right? It's a huge yeah. thing. And so identifying that was, was really big for me. So that's where it comes down to what I discussed last time, man. Something that Robert instilled with me was maker time and manager time. Those are two different things. They're mm. so different. Maker time is when you have time to be able to make what's necessary to you. Right? You're gonna make things work. I'm gonna make things work with my wife and my daughter. I'm mm -hmm. gonna make my vacations work. I'm gonna make things work, right? Because I do that, I have to understand that my managerial expertise by managing my business, managing my time, my allocations, things that I do that are necessary, is gonna benefit the, you know, both. Mm -hmm. Stop bleeding both of them, right? Yeah. Stop cutting one short for the other. Make it work. I love and then that. Manage your, you know, manage your expectations. Fuck yeah. What a quote I like is, um, it's not that you don't have time for things. You you only have time for the things that you make time for. Oof. Yeah, dude. Right? Because it's yeah, like it's so, so damn true. Dude. So many yeah. people claim to be like, oh, I got this going on. I got this going on. Well, then that thing that you're saying you have all these things going on for, that thing's not that important no, to you. Not at all. Because obviously it's not. You would have fucking done it. You would have done it. Yeah. You would have made time for yeah. it. Facts. And so that's, no, I, I love that. That's so Rob, true. Bro. It's that, Rob, dude. Rob, man. Yeah, he's going to love this. Buffalo Club, baby. <laughs> oh. I don't, I don't drink with my left anymore. I don't drink with my left. Dude, that's so funny, man. I got out of the Buffalo Club like 10 minutes into the Buffalo Club, dude. I'm out, so I can't tell you, but that's hilarious, bro. Literally, dude. I feel Are like you left-handed? Yeah, yeah, I'm left-handed. Yeah, yeah. left I, I used to only hold drinks with my left, dude. Ever since I met Rob, I literally fucking don't pick up a drink with my left hand. I so kid you not. By the way, he will hold you accountable, homie. I know. Yeah, Rob is no joke, bro. Dude, if you want to know, for the day if you want to know what the Buffalo Club is, and you want to be a, a member, reach out. Yeah, that's nice. DM, DM Buffalo. <laughs> yeah, DM Buffalo. DM Buffalo. You'll be a part of the Buffalo Club. For sure, for sure. That's yeah. I mean, really networking. That that's where it all comes down to. I really, think so, isn't man. It? And I the people you meet so. that have a true impact on you. Mm -hmm. Relationships. Able, yeah, being able to filter out the things that you know. Uh, are in the way. Oh, right? it's trouble time. Yeah. Filtering out the things that are in oh, the did way. You get teriyaki chicken. I did. Oh, dude, that's a Ma good one. Making, making the hard decisions, right? What's your really hard, man? Honestly, hard decisions. It, 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 those are tough pills that you have to swallow. And here, now, here's actually something I learned in the Marine Corps, which I, I stem into my business, and, and it took a while for my team to know. Right, because I can be, I, I'm a, dude, I pride myself in being a Marine, which means I pride myself in expedited results. I pride myself in being a little bit harder, right? But the thing is, you can either be one of two things. Mm -hmm. And I truly believe this. Now, there's a way to believe them, but that's after identifying what your mission statement is. And the thing is, you can either be liked or you can be respected. 
Mm. Okay. So something that, I, and let me break the two down, right? So when it comes down to it, if, if my team does something incorrect and I don't fix it right away in a way where I know of importance and I don't expedite them to be able to understand that this is wrong, then I'm just putting myself in a position where I just want to be liked because I don't want them to be upset. I want to be liked by them. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. If I stop things, if I stop snowballs from becoming avalanches, and I let them know that this is why it's important, this is why you'll never do it again, and you will never do it in front of me, you will never do it in my business, then you've identified a respect pattern. Where realizing is now they know, oh shit, Trevor does not like this, right? So every time that they see me or they think about things that are gonna happen, they're proactive about it because they know I'm gonna hold them accountable. Accountability comes from respect. It doesn't come from being liked, right? So the moment I stop snowballs from becoming avalanches is the moment that they know, holy shit, I should never do this because of this. Which means that the consistency of training is held to my standard. Because they know, hey, make sure that you never do this because he will do X, Y, and Z. He gets pissed off because of X, Y, and Z. So when that, that, when that, when that lateral comes down to me expanding, they know the reach of my accountability. If you don't do that right away, and you just say, hey, you know what? This is why, you know, and you start, be, you start making yourself in a pattern of being a li of a likability approach. They know that there's not, they're not going to right away. But the thing is, if you give them an inch, they will take a mile because people want to see what they can get away with, right? 100%. So I put people on a leash until I realize that we're potty trained to include me. Yeah. And I go, you know what? Let's unclip you because we are all trained, right? But until then, why the fuck would I put a puppy in my house? and then get upset when they do puppy things, right? No, yeah. I'm going to make sure that things are correct. Mm -hmm. And then in doing so, they don't right away, right? And I think about this as a puzzle, right? Mm. Everybody's a puzzle piece, right? And it's my vision, it's my company, I get that, but I'm still pieces on the puzzle, but I can zoom out, I can see where I wanna be, and I just go, you, go here, you, here, you, here, right? No questions asked, right? And they, at, at times, they don't wanna know why. Like, what, okay, all right, fine, yes, of course, I'll call, why, why, yeah. The moment my puzzle's created, I zoom out and I go, look what we just did. You know why we yep. did this? Because we worked as a team. We did X, Y, and Z. And so when they see the bigger picture, they go, holy shit, right? They understand the respect of what it takes to be able to build something, which is putting together the masterpiece of what your vision is. Dude. That's a huge thing for me. And, well, not only is it a huge thing for you, it's like a key part to any successful business is a leader that has a vision. Massive, man. I think That's it's, so true. It's like if you have different visions within a business good luck yeah like Oof. you need to you need to have one vision and you need somebody that has that vision and they need to be surrounded by a team that is agreed with that vision yeah and right one of the hardest parts about being a leader is bringing people onto your vision right but when you're able to do that as a leader and you're able to make make everybody on your team feel like they're just as passionate about that vision. Yeah. They make that vision their own. When you're able to make other people think that Huge. the vision that you have is their own, dude, it's done, right? Frank, I, dude, Jesse, no, no, that. I'll tell you right now, man, we call it drinking the Kool-Aid, right? I'll tell you right now. Corporate and life. Dude, corporate life. And it's like, but it's also at the same time, it's like... Necessary. You know, it's like so necessary. It's kind of like a cult, you know? It's like, yeah. hey, we all believe on what we believe, right? This is gonna be very refreshing, you know, but if we don't do it correctly, then we're gonna, you know, it's gonna be cyanide. We're all gonna die together. What do you want? We yeah. gotta do it both. Do you wanna sip fucking $5,000 champagne at a cabana in Vegas, right? Because we can create that with our hard work, or we're all drinking the same thing, which means if we wanna kill our business and not do our part, then we're gonna drink fucking cyanide, and we're all gonna die together. 100%. Right? So which way, what's your thirst quench? Because I want, I want the ladder. Yeah, yeah, I want, I want to, I want to be at the command. You no, know what and, I mean? and, it, and it is necessary. Like I think I, I worked at New American Funding, you know, when I was doing mortgages for some time, and I remember that's where I learned the drink the Kool Aid terminology. Mm -hmm. But I did remember in my mindset, even though I was very, you know, entrepreneurial, I remember thinking, you know what? I agree with the Kool Aid of this company. I yeah. wouldn't be with this company if I didn't agree with the Kool-Aid. Yeah. And so you got to have good Kool-Aid, man. You got to put some sugar in that thing. Oh, yeah. Because if people don't want to drink it, then like you're going to have issues, Facts. internal issues, and you're not going to be able to grow. That's so damn true. That's it's very so, true. So, so damn true. And I, I think um, I heard, uh, I think it was Robert Wensley was talking about, there's that guy that's doing sales right now where he's like, everybody on my team has to have six packs. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, And I think a lot of people are hating on him. They're like, dude, not everybody has a six pack. But Robert Wensley, I love the perspective he had to it. He was talking to somebody and him and the person he was interviewing, neither of them had six packs, keep in mind. But he was saying like, yo, that's Andrew Elliott's 
culture. Yeah. Right. And yeah. if you go and you join that team and you yeah. don't have a six pack, you're going to realize really quick. I don't fit this culture. Dude. Or you're going to get a six pack. Yeah. Or you're going to get a six pack. I totally agree with you. Yeah. And here's the thing when it comes down to, to the Marine Corps. My biggest thing that I keep hearing, man, was, you know, the, the, the discrimination, right? And it was, you know, they discriminate against transgenders, right? They discriminate. Can you believe that? They won't have women march with men or, you know, they won't, they, they're not the same fighting force, yada, yada. And I, I, I will say right now, look, honest opinion. We have been discriminating in the Marine Corps, you know, since 1775, which is when the Marine Corps was founded. You know why? Because if you had one arm, you can't join the Marine Corps. You smoke too much weed, you can't join the Marine Corps. You're too short. You can't join the Marine Corps. You're too tall. You can't join the Marine Corps. Why? Because we have prided ourselves as the nation's number one elite fighting force. That's mm. what we did. So in order to keep that reputation, what do you have to have? Fucking standards, right? 100%. So do these standards. And yep. I'll tell you what. We allowed it, right? And I have no fault of what's necessary of what you want to do. But the moment that you want to translate into what men are doing, mm. we have to do 23 pull-ups, run, you know, run, run three miles within 24 minutes. We have to do 115 crunches. Mm. If you can't do that... You're not upholding the standard. That's not a you issue. That's a Marine Corps issue because we have men who, by the way, can't do that. So yeah. what happens to them? They get the fuck out. 100%. So why are you, why is that any different? 100%. And vice versa. You know, and so holding standards amongst that was if you wanted to join, you know what you're getting yourself into. You want to be on Andy Elliott's team, which means he can tell you to lift up your goddamn shirt. If you don't have a six pack, you knew what culture you were getting in front of. And dude, the you know your culture. The beauty of that standard is like, it's not just that to be a Marine, you had to do 23 pull ups, you had to be able to do it. It's not just that that's for no reason. It's like, hey, no, dude. I might be in a situation where I get my legs blown off and I'm going to need you to carry me Brother. or drag me out. Yeah. So it's okay for me to have this standard yeah. for you? Dude, it is a f it's the funniest thing where I hear people go, but you, now you're dealing with absolutes. Like, what? Like how often does that happen? Well, I don't know. We are the smallest branch. We're not needed, but we're wanted outside of Congress from American people, which means that we are the ones who control 80% of war. The first people that hit the sand or hit the grounds when it comes down to ground approach or boots on grounds of a war are Marines. So why would you not want them to be hard charging devil dog motherfuckers who just take lives and take names, right? That's the thing. That's what you want. Uh, that right? is what you want. So why would you misconstrued or start commingling things where now we don't know where if I ended up getting shot, if I'm going to look at the people to my left or right, I need to make sure both can drag me out. 100%. I need to. And guess what? That's we we practice, you know, combat the same we practice training. It's yep. the same way. We the same force, the same everything. I'll tell you right now. Like if you if you don't want to get beat the fuck up in Marine Corps martial arts, or you want to go to a range and not get held to a certain standard, you're in the wrong branch, man. Percent. We even go. We even go. And this is I love every branch. Here's the thing. I love it, but I pride myself in being. You know, you are in the Air Force. You're in the Navy. You're in the Army. You are a Marine. Yeah. You're not of the branch. You are what the branch is, right? And so when you emulate that. If you ended up drinking and driving and got caught, it's not Lionel Trevor Ray and got caught. No, it's a United States Marine, you know, got caught because we uphold something bigger than ourselves. That's what we do with our companies. We uphold something bigger mm. than ourselves. Drive-by home buyers is bigger than you. Mm. So why would you put yourself in a position to be able to get compromised? Dude. It's the same exact thing. And it, yeah. it's so sad that we live, in a, we live in a world where society tries to tell us that we need to compromise, like yeah. especially in the sense of Marines, right? That's why you're saying that. It's like, oh, you can, you know, you don't need to be able to do this or you can be a transgender or this or the other. It's like, there's a reason we have these standards in place. 100%. Because of what the people that are in this position need to do. Yeah. They need to be able to execute to this level. And we're going to have requirements to ensure that those people are able to execute at that level because those people executing to that level ensures every person in America's freedom. Facts. And so it's just <sighs> brother, I mean you're 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 preaching to the choir when it comes down to that. And that's really unfortunate because we pride ourselves in our standards. So when it gets lowered, you know, then what makes us different? Right? What makes it what makes the bar higher? I've trained with Chinese, I've trained with other people, I've South Koreans that come in and they go, Wow, our reputation supersedes us. I've trained with people, dude, French. They come, you know, to our chow hall, we'll be in the field. They literally ask me and they go you know, which, which, uh, you know, can I ask you a question? Right. Cause we're fucking Marines, right? And they're like, the guys, you're the guys, you're the guys that like, can I ask you a question. I go, yeah. They're like, you know, what, what was, what was your dog's name? And you think about it. And the <laughs> thing is we got briefed beforehand. We have people with certain cultures that think that in order to become a Marine, John Wickett, bro, you got to raise a dog, 
right? You got to come in there. You got to go and battle with the, with the dog. And you have to be able to kill the dog in front of others in a way that they tell you to kill the dog. And you know why? Because it puts you in such a sacred position where they go, holy shit, I can never do that. That's why you don't fuck with these people, right? Yeah. Same when it comes to parents. Damn. The Chinese thought that when it came down to it, did you kill your dad or your mom? Like, I don't, so I, I don't want to, I know, like, I just want to know, like, was it, which one, which parent? They think we kill a parent, right? And you know what? Good. Because Good. America wants to be the bulldog of mm -hmm. the world. Good. So guess what? When it comes down to it, if you think that we're doing things like this, why mm. would we lower our standards to allow complacency to come in so that way they can get overruled? Where all of these opinions that you have can actually become lawful opinions. Right. If Dude. we got overtaking and your freedom of speech was gone, do you know how much more you'd have to conform to your left and right lateral limits? It's disgusting, right? Like it's sad. Dude. And the thing is, I've never, I've been in 24 different countries. The only country I've been spit on is America. That's sad. Three different occasions. I was literally about I've to say. I've been spit on three times in America in my uniform. The way that Americans claim that they don't have freedom blows my mind. It's, it's like, absolutely insane. Go live somewhere else. Go, go fucking live somewhere yeah. else. He was talking about the standard that Marines are held to. Like, I've trained with South Korean Marines as well. And they literally march and have, like, hoses sprayed on them in freezing weather. And yet they still look at the U.S. Marines as, like, that's the standard. Yeah. Dude. I'll tell you right now. You know, and, and the thing is, I've trained with, I've trained with troops in, in Johannesburg, which is South Africa. I've also trained with U.K. troops. And you guys are great. You guys are great. But there are, there are standards <laughs> of, like... And, and I'm not going to speak on behalf of it, Lewis. Maybe you want to go into it a little bit. But there are there are things that you can't say on social media, though. Correct? Like over yeah. overseas. I'm going to use the no. restroom real yeah. quick, guys. I don't think so. No. I think if, in regards to social media, I think more things are censored here. Really? Yeah. Just even some. Can of you say like death like, to the royal like family the and UK, stuff like that? UK citizens. Probably. Might, UK I citizens heard that you get fined. It. Like, Don't you get fined if you say, like, death to the royal family and stuff like that? Like, you can't get in trouble. I mean, Harry has said some pretty outlandish shit as well since he started... Well, then maybe, yeah, don't quote me then, yeah. But I, I, I could have thought that there were censorship issues in the UK. Well, not that I've ever seen. I've definitely... I, obviously, I lived in the UK for 18 years. I've lived here for six years. I've definitely seen more censorship here... But that may also be because of the day and age that we live in right. compared yeah. to when I was living in Amer uh, in England. Yeah, I mean, even five, ten years ago, like, the coverage of social media, the coverage of the internet is is completely different today than it was five, For sure. ten years ago. But even, like, some of our, like, pod, like, just our shorts from our podcast have been censored. And we've been, really? we, we have, like, 100 followers. So that's one wow. thing. Wow. So I'm not sure. And I'm you know what? Though? That's you know that's YouTube and shit, though, man. Like yeah. that's just that's just agendas. And that's the problem, though, because I feel like America's always been known as the country of the free. Yeah. Right. And everyone that has fought on behalf of America guaranteed that. But now I don't know because I honestly feel more free when I'm in England. Yeah. We, I feel they, like they say country of the free, home of the censored, man. That's what America is now. Right, and I feel like in the grand scheme of things, the freedom is probably larger. But in like the small everyday things, I feel like it's much more like restricted. Like even the fact that... What was your first time in America? When I was, uh, I don't know, like five. Five? Oh, yeah. so you, you, you came here frequently. Yeah, Frequented I did. Uh, once a year, maybe, from five? Maybe. Or, wow, yeah. Florida, all different places. Yeah. But the everyday things, I feel more restricted here. Like, even jaywalking. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. that's just, like, a, a little example that I see that, like, really pissed me off when I first <laughs> moved here. I was like, you're telling you me... Take it for it? Right, if there's not a car coming, I can't cross unless a little man right. on a screen Tell is telling me that I can cross. Like that, although like in the grand scheme of things, yes, there's a lot of things that you can do. You're very free out here for sure. But like weird little things like that and like drinking under the age of 21, like certain little rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, because the UK is, tw is uh, 18. 18. Yeah. The rest of the world, really. Right. Just certain little things just like feel very restricting. But in the grand scheme of things, you can do anything you want here. Yeah. Right. Like in the big picture. Right. You, there's no cap to the income yeah. that you can yeah. earn. You can have right. as many children as you want. You can buy as many right. houses as you want. There's no cap in like the grand scheme of things.
But the little everyday things, that's where I feel a bit like... Mm. Constricted. Yeah. I actually love that point of view, man. It's something I never would have thought of. What do you, what do you think... Do you have buddies in the, in the service in the UK? I have one. How, what, are the, what are their thoughts? So, growing up, like, I, I haven't seen him since he's joined... Okay. But growing up, he came from a military background. Mm. He he was also always very disciplined. He was also always very loyal to that. But I feel like, you know, there's like everyone that kind of joins has a similar mentality. It's a mentality of service, of discipline, of um, loyalty to their country. So, do yeah. You, do, do you find yourself, do you think the level of patriotism in the UK is the same as America? No. Okay. No way. So, do you think you pride yourselves? You do you think that's you think that's a good thing? Do you think that's good in America that we pride ourselves in being patriotic, or do you think that I it's, think it's a great thing? Okay. And I think it's weird because there's a lot of Americans that are very patriotic. There's a lot of Americans that like hate America, which is weird. Keep the rest. Right. English people are proud to be English, but don't like the country. Mm, yeah. Like they don't like the lifestyle. They're proud to say, yeah, I'm English. I can neck nine pints at the, at the pub and drive home. <laughs> right. like, I'm gonna go for to, I'm going to go to the football match and have a scrap. Like, that's, that's what English people are oh, proud of. Oh, I've been blowing bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and it's weird because, like, English people, like, kind of like, oh, those Americans, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Right. But I guarantee if 90% of English people, if they had the opportunity to move out here, bang, they'd be I here. believe it 100%. I believe it 100%. It's kind of a weird thing. I think and that's, I'll tell you that's right what now. allows the, the military to be like the you said that the Japanese or something military they get sprayed with hoses yeah. and they still look South at us. Korean, and, yeah. And they still look at us and they're like those are the guys. They're I the think guys, it's yeah. because of the because the they like patriotism. Said, they still believe the that patriotism. Like, in order to be a marine before you even complete training, you have to kill a member of your family. Well, dude, and I think the reason that American Marines are such a high standard and they don't have to get put through that is right. because of patriotism, right? Yeah. American Marines say, you know what? I'm going to be going into service for my country. Mm -hmm. I don't need to get sprayed with a hose. I don't need to go through this miserable torture to be the absolute fucking best at what I do because I am so proud to serve and die for my country because I love my country that much. You know, it is a wild thing. It is a wild thing to be deployed or to do things that are dangerous in riots and embassies and things that I've done to be completely content with that. Yeah. And people yeah. look at it and they go, well, it's brainwashing. And I go, good, right? It's good because you have to be built down as a man and built mm. back up to be able to be a, an e exemplary fighting force for, for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it is weird now to know the life I could have had and where it could have gone ar you know, uh, awry from me just knowing that my mission was to defeat and defend, right? Mm. It's a weird, it's a weird feeling. You know, depending on your MOS, military occupational specialty, whether you're a rifleman, infantry, whatever you're doing, you put yourself in the position where you go, you know what, this is fucking what I'm here for. I'm going to die. You know, I'm 20 years old. I'm totally good to do that. And meeting Medal of Honor recipients and meeting people who are lucky enough to get blown up and not pass, it blows your mind because it's such a chaptered base, which people, and this is the thing where it's like, wow, with my daughter, you know, she'll wake up at four and she's tired. And I don't know if it's a Marine Corps thing, but I just thoroughly don't mind it, right? It's like, you know what, I could be somewhere else. And maybe that's experience, right? You're like, I could be somewhere else. I could be on the rooftop in Johannesburg in 108 degree heat. And I could be fighting off people who have Molotov cocktails, which I've done, right? And it's like, yeah. or I could be in bed with my wife and my daughter and she could be wanting some milk and I can get up in my nice house <laughs> and go downstairs and get her what she needs. And it's like when you put things into perspective, then you mm -hmm. realize that. And I think perspective is patriotism. I think when people finally find perspective, they find patriotism. Dude. For That's sure. a, I want that edited right there. Yeah, I like dude, that one. I, the whole <laughs> everything you were saying, the word that was ringing in my head was perspective. Yeah. You talked about like absolutism a minute ago. Like there there shouldn't be a all or nothing kind of thought process there when it comes to patriotism. Like, oh, you're either all patriotic, you know, all patriotic or you're not. Yeah. Or it's either you're racist or you're Democrat. I right. hate that. 
Yeah, trust. I hate it. You know, that's what you get. You know, I got called baby killer. You get spit on. You get, you know, you get, you get thrown a little, you know, pig blood on you and everything. And it's, it's Depends just so country. unfortunate. When you go to Australia, you get tennis balls thrown onto your ship that give you a number and an address, and you go there and they give you dinner and then you know hook up with you and then you just leave. There you go. I'm moving to Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, do have hey. 10 minutes on that subject. <laughs> speaking, though, speaking of across the pond, <laughs> I think you got someone someone that's across the pond, man, that uh, deserves some some recognition. <laughs> and your last name starts with Watson. <laughs> Watson. And it's not Doctor. Miss Emma, baby. Oh. <laughs> Emma Watson. Is she as big of a deal she in, in the UK? Is she is she as big a deal in the UK as she is in America? Am I sleeping oh, yeah. on Emma Watson? No, no. Dude, are you okay. sleeping? Bro, wait, wait. Emma? Do I need to pull out my phone right now? Who's Emma? Like, Call what? me. What's wait, happening? Just, you you know, say, who is Emma Watson? Okay, we'll remove ourselves from the fact of you know that I just spoke forty minutes. I love with my wife. My wife is well aware that if Emma Watson moved in the same zip code as me, that my daughter's calling you know somebody else <laughs> daddy. You know, it is what it is. I will be a landscaper for that woman, and I will work my way oh, into... Dude. Harry Potter. Yeah, Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. Spell yeah. Spell yeah. 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 Spell yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. It's spelly on me. Okay. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. That's what's happening. Hey, that she's, woman she's is a, a huge, wonder of the world. She's a, she's a huge Not deal over in UK. Oh, yeah. She's gorgeous, but she's one of the smartest people in the world. She went to Brown University. You know, like, the, it's not just her experience with Harry Potter, but everything. Dude. I want to be talked out, talked about the way Emma Watson's talked about. Oh my God, man, it's gross how much I love this woman. So, she became a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, do you know where she's from? No, but I can find out. There it is, <laughs> <laughs> dude. I, I tell you, so you had this before we ended up going. You had a couple things that were on there, and Emma was one of them because of why? Because I was doing a little bit of research, you know, as you do. <laughs> when you're having a guest on the yeah. podcast. And I come across a Pinterest <laughs> account. And I'm like seeing like, oh, some tattoos, stuff, like some houses. And I see a whole folder <laughs> on Emma Watson. And I'm like, what's going on here? And there's just saved pictures of Emma Watson in like different poses. Like nothing like sexual, like yeah. really, but just her like looking pretty. Like, yeah. And I'm like, what? Yeah, that's her. Wow. That is her. Yeah. I say it all the time. Whose it Pinterest is, account is this? It is my Trevor's. Oh, I was account, like, dude. what's the end of that? I was like, why is that? Wait, so dude, what did I have to do when you were researching the podcast? It was thoroughly my Pinterest. I know exactly what you're talking about. I haven't added on to that in forever. Maybe like, I don't know, a week or something. But I was, <laughs> I was no, like, wait, okay. It, it's an older Pinterest, I'll tell you right now. It is by far, if you could sum me up and you had to use two words outside of, you know, Parkour, novation, parkour, novation, parkour. My wife, whatever. If I was just, dude, Emma it'd be Emma Mother fucking Watson, brother. <laughs> that woman is. Every, you know what I did every year? No bullshit. Every year I was in the Marines for for well, the first four years. I apologize. The first first four years in the Marines, I made a new video every single year. Every year of me sending it to Emma Watson to be my date at the Marine Corps ball, November tenth. Oh my every, gosh! And some of them was doing pull ups, and I'd be like. Emma, you know, and I, I oh sent it to God. her, bro. I sent it to her. <laughs> and by the way, if she were to have responded, I would just thrown up everywhere. But I don't know what to do. Could I, <laughs> could I have a conversation with her? I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I really don't know what I would do. I'd probably just, you know, all jokes. But I don't know. Maybe I'd, you know, lock her up somewhere, you know, forever <laughs> and stare at her with Polaroids in her. You know, I don't know what I would do. I I really, her. It's a weird obsession. Feed her what? Dog food. Do okay. It'd be dog food. You know what? And the thing was, I would take her out every once in a while, right? Orga I organic dog food. Organic the, dog uh, food. Good, yeah, good you know, Emma, uh, keep keep the figure. I would yeah. say, I would say for Emma, though, it is so, she is just such a beauty mm -hmm. where I, I don't know if I could ever not just drool on her all the time. Well, you're Emma Watson. <laughs> well, she's right. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? That would be amazing. That would be you ever that, somebody hey, shit themselves on a podcast? Season. Next Mid season. Mid-20s, yeah. season two, Trevor on again. You just wait. She's beautiful. That's my Selena Gomez. Selena? Every oh. birthday wish when I blow out those candles. Me, Selena Gomez. Me, Selena Gomez. Dude, I don't even know who that is for me. What? No? Oh, come on. You must know. There's got to be somebody. 
Phil hey, trying to think. Miranda who? Bacharin. Who the fuck Miranda is Miranda Bacharin? Bacharin? She plays Vanessa as in Deadpool. Oh. oh. Tell me you wouldn't. I mean, oh. Tell me you wouldn't. No, not, I would. But that's, that's not, not the one for me. No. That's the one Emma. for me. She, like... Uh, or I Olivia, want or Emma, but here's the thing: Emma is very. She's a feminist, right? So she she's is. very a women's activist, which I love. <laughs> yeah, I know. But there, there are pieces <laughs> with that. There are pieces where I can read between the lines, and I'm like, Emma, honey, like, now you want a man, you know? Like, you want a man? You don't want a ginger. You, you want, want a man that man. does motivations. That does motivations. <laughs> Equity split. I don't even know. Everyone's yeah. happy. Hey, <laughs> Equity's not the only thing I'll be splitting. Right? <laughs> oh, I love it. Wait. So while I was also doing my research, came across a few other things. Dude, I was so thrown off when we started talking about Emma Watson <laughs> for a second. I was like, and then even you explained it, but then you didn't say that it was his Pinterest. I was like, wait, so there's <laughs> an account on her? <laughs> yes. Love it. And my I, account. I also found something called The War Within. Yes. <laughs> this is also on Pinterest. Yes. So I have a band. Actually, I don't have what a band. I have fuck? a band. I had a band. Dude, this guy, this guy sends it, bro. Dude, Dude when, when we started talking about this podcast, guys, it was like we sat down, we we're discussing, yeah, innovations, yada yada, money, Rolexes, whatever. And he was like, no, Emma Watson, <laughs> the War Within, and I'm like. Are you 20 years deep in my life Dude, right now? And he was like, yeah. I love this guy, bro. I'm I'm only able to come on to these episodes with like no research <laughs> because I know that this fucker like does sends it. Whatever he Dude, does. I w- I've been a drummer for 17 years. I still love drumming. <laughs> I drum, I play piano. I play piano every night actually in my house in my front living room. I play piano for my daughter and my wife. They love it. I actually just learned the Super Bowl theme for all my family that comes this Sunday. <laughs> Hell yeah. So, but yeah, but I would say, I, yeah, I'm the drummer for the band The War Within. We only, we've had 10 or 11 songs. We opened for some big cats, though. I've opened for Motionless and White. She you know, part we of a band. Played, Don't know who that I is. I was, yeah. No one knows it's who a that screamo, is. It's a screamo <laughs> band. Okay. <laughs> I was in a hardcore band. Who else? Was, who else have you opened uh, for? We played the same stage as Bring Me the Horizon, A Day to Remember, Attila, oh, you know, okay, like Okay, okay. Yeah. I know Bring Me the Horizon. I love Bring Me, yeah. Ollie Sykes, right? And um, we thought we were going to hit it big. And then our bassist got his girlfriend pregnant, and our guitarist couldn't Shit. afford his subway money anymore to be able to come to my house. Fuck. So we ended up leaving... But hold on, where in the timeline is this, dude? Like while I was from doing parkour, parkour this was last week. This yeah. is, this is fourteen to parkour. nineteen. This was this was that's a good question. This was this was seventeen nineteen. Okay, seventeen and nineteen. So I was doing parkour, but I also did this. And I, dude, you guys, I thought I was gonna hit a big with the band. I mean, we had we won number two in Hardcore Fest. Like we were we were being played. Like it was like a thing. People were buying my drumsticks. Like it was a thing. Shut the fuck up, but the dude. Th- the thing is though, man, with bands. It's like we had no marketing with me now. Like I'm, I know marketing. Yeah. Before then, though, it was just like starstruck. Like you didn't sell. Mer- like I didn't know yeah. how to sell merch or like I didn't know you to get yeah. merch. I didn't know anything, man. Mm-hmm. And now I was with people who just crushed it. Yeah. And we got overran so quickly. But one of my favorite genres, my favorite band, is a day to remember. If you don't know a day to remember, you will listen to them. You will love them. Okay. Dude, and that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, dude. I'll drum. I'll, yeah. Dude, I feel like I did. I, I almost wish we had the. We we're at the point where we were like, we got a drum set right here in drum. the corner. I know. Give yeah. us a solo. <laughs> Emma Watson's on the drum. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you would lose him. I'd be done. That would be, be amazing. And while I was doing my research, <laughs> I don't even know what the. <laughs> I don't even know what to expect, bro. You about to tell me this man did like tap dancing or? Well, I, did, I did. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> well, I, I stumbled across some uh, some superior court, not superior, just some court records. I saw a petition that you're trying to change your name. Yes. What, what, <laughs> what, what, it's ongoing as well. It's not like a closed case. Like, what is it going is on? ongoing. It doesn't okay. want to be Trevor. Uh, apparently, Skywalker was taken. No. Uh-huh. <laughs> so, no. you're, so you're going for what? what Darth Passion. So yeah, getting <laughs> getting Darth, pa- Darth Passion. Yes, Darth Irakunda. My name is Lionel Trevor Aching. Right. Okay. My father's last name was Aching. I went by Trevor Simon my entire life. My father's name is Lionel Aching. Mm-hmm. I didn't know my dad. Right, so okay. I never went by the first name. That was my dad's name. My mother 
you know, he ended up getting incarcerated. I went by Trevor, my middle name, and then I ended up carrying my mother's maiden name, Simon, for my whole life until I joined the Marine Corps. And they go off your birth certificate and they go, oh, you're Aheen, right? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that correct. In the Marine Corps, in boot camp, they call me gay. <laughs> they call me gayhing, right? Because that's amazing, you're gay? right? Yeah, they'd be gay. They, I would have to do push-ups on how many dicks I could suck. So I'd have to. I'd have to. Wait, do, you must have done hundreds. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> How'd you know, man? I was like, this is my favorite thing to do, man. So I ended up doing that. It was gayhing. You know, is what it is. And then I, as I came into it, it was. Um, I wanted to go by Simon because, true story, I eloped with my wife. Where We talked about that like fucking 10 hours ago, right? Eloped. But, uh, I, I got married to my wife in the court. We didn't have a oh, ceremony. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't right. know what eloped was this whole time? No. Oh. But yeah, carry on. But, but <laughs> to fast forward, to, to, to rewind, so we had a courthouse marriage. That means elope. I did have a ceremonial marriage with my wife's family, all of our friends, everything. Year a couple of years later. So anyway, we did I we cried. did do it. You Aww. were in my wedding party. My wedding party, all thing. But anyway, <sighs> so my last name was still Aching. So when I got married, I don't want to carry on my father's maiden name. No offense. It's just I don't know you. Yeah. Right. My, I went by my mother's maiden name. Respect. So I create. I, I changed my name instead of Lionel Trevor Aching. I changed it to. Trevor Lionel Simon, just because the man I am with who I am came from your line, so I'll oh. make your name my middle name, but Simon is my mother's maiden. So Trevor Lionel Simon was my name. The thing that I didn't really do, though, because I held 11 businesses and I was in the middle of selling my first business, Brokers in Arms, for a mm -hmm. bunch of money, was making it official because I was like, wait, how does this work, yada, yada, I'm selling some companies, and they were like, let's wait. Well, I never fucking did it, right? So I just like, I never paid that out. And now in doing so, I have an open court case for a name change. But my wife's name, because I didn't want her to take Simon, or I'm sorry, Aheng was Clifton. So Clif my, yeah, that's my wife's maiden oh, name. Okay, okay. So my name is Lionel Aheng. Her name is Katrina Clifton. And our daughter's name is Kaya Simon. What the fuck? So whenever I go to a doctor's appointment and they look and they're like, who are these complete strangers right. with your daughter? And I'm like, no, like the birth certificate, yada, yada. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, man. It's such a headache, dude. Mate. It's such a rough. headache. That's rough. Fuck. I don't blame you for changing your name then. Glad we cleared that up. Dude, I, up, I, I just missed it. Our, our new video editor just like I forgot that this this podcast has gone on way longer than I expected because it's fucking great. It's a great podcast. So what happens when you have a great time? I think when we were starting this, like uh, uh, Tristan, who's like producing it, he's like, "Podcast can't go over two hours." We're like, "If we're having a great fucking time, bro, it's gonna go over two yeah. hours." Fact. And by the way, Rogan's done four hour podcast. Exactly. Some of his best viewed ones are four hours. So anybody who's tuning in still, I think my phone's dead. It is. But yeah, anybody who's still tuning in, I'll tell you right now, like this is a good podcast. Yeah, trust. Yeah, yeah. It, it's great, honestly. But honestly, I, I haven't had this good of a time for on real. any of them. It's not because of the alcohol. Yeah. Never. <laughs> it's the company. I'll tell Never. you what, guys. Look at your notes, dude. <laughs> God damn, I love this, dude. You sent this, man. That's not insane, dude. I'm out here like, hey. well, I can rewatch it. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I Spark think notes it. The, the amazing things that I got out of this podcast, firstly, be a big deal. Be a goddamn big deal. In everything you do. I love yeah. that. I did love that. That's I love how that. you make noise. I love that because what you mentioned as well when you said that, it's so easy to have the other perspective of, I'm already a big deal. Or yeah. like, wait, oh, yeah. it's just the, the, the ego, dude. Remove your fucking the ego. ego. Kill your ego. Kill your ego. I yeah. live by that. Kill right? your ego. Because okay. at the end of the day, <laughs> no, you're this fucker. Dude. Wait, popcorn. <laughs> no, this guy, bro. This guy, I say this to him all the time. He goes, no, you need some <laughs> ego. I'm like, no, I know myself. I need to kill the ego because it's just having that mindset of killing the ego and understanding that you're always in a position to be going upward. Mm -hmm. You're always in a position where you need to grow. You need yeah. to learn from the people around you, right? So I loved when you said that, like, be a big deal. No matter how big of a deal you are, no matter if you're Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, I hope Elon Musk, because of the type of guy he is, I'm sure he's sitting there and he's saying to himself, I need to be a big deal. Facts. I'm not a big deal right now. I need to be a big deal. Yeah. 
How the, what, how the fuck else are you going to run a goddamn multi-billion dollar industry? Right. 100%, exactly. How are you going to walk into a room and have everybody stand up and look at you if you're not a big goddamn deal? Yeah. Wow. 100%. You tell me. And the, the crazy thing, to, the key to being that big deal is recognizing you need to be a big deal. Goddamn facts. And lead Dude. by example. Exactly. And I also love how you said that, you know, when you became, like, connected with Ryan Pineda and Brian that you know you do their novations now yeah and that's the power of networking and being a big deal yep and i also love um the main things that i took from this is lead from the front oof right that's a great one yeah if you're going to hold people accountable to your vision which we spoke on mm -hmm. then you need to be leading from the front Facts. and have absolute faith in yourself that it can be done yes. in the vision yeah so lead from the front Faith, respect, huge, 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 huge. Network, huge. <laughs> Delayed gratification, <laughs> bigger. <laughs> whoa, whoa! Secret, secret. Trevor Aang talents. You impersonate <laughs> Trump, mate. <laughs> and perspective, huge, huge, huge. Yeah. Perspective, perspective is massive, man. Perspective is is huge for me. Truly, anybody who sees where they want to go, if you continue to look at that vision, in a year you'll probably get there. But if you don't realize what took you there, you'll never get further. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Fuck yeah. It's a good thing I can rewatch this, bro. And yeah. I'm, going. <laughs> I'm what, too deep to keep writing notes. <laughs> what's in the way becomes the way. Yeah. I will give that to, man of the to force. Robert 100%. It is man of the force, yeah. Hello there. You know, like it's so Robert... <laughs> But it's so Rocket true. Man. Like, you will put yourself that what's in the way becomes a way is such an analysis paralysis type of thing. I don't have that, by the way. But what I do have is I put myself in a position where I was like, I want 20 DMs a day. I want thousands of followers. I want this. And I just fucking grinded to get it. Now, now I have 20 DMs a day. All, yeah, and it's, in, it, it's anxiety ridden where I'm like, oh my God, how do I respond to everybody? Well, guess what? What's in the way becomes a way. Right, your mm -hmm. initiative was in the way. That becomes the way. So now that you're there and you find where you're at, start leaning into your destination and start doing what you said that you were going to do. And so as I start doing that and I create a battle rhythm and I do that for 20, 30 minutes a day, I'm realizing that, man, it's just going to create more and more opportunity for you. So it was a huge thing for me. Compound. Yeah, it's compounding. Yeah, compound interest, man, right there. And those 20 DMs a day... That's just from the women. Yeah, all of it, actually. <laughs> just, yeah. That's actually, it's, it's only, it's Emma Watson messaging me 20. Did, she's a little, she's a little clingy. So, uh, yeah. Emma's a little clingy, guys. She hits me up all well, the time. I don't blame her. I, don't, yeah. Yeah. I would and be I'm as well. Like, I'm like, Emma, I am married. Like, yes, what are you me. doing? <laughs> it's my yeah, baby. Just really, actually, it's so funny. I don't get a bunch of women in my dms and i think it's maybe because i post my wife a lot but the thing is my wife gets hate in her dms dude yeah a lot from women you know what it's Fuckers. it's more men saying what that it's not gonna last must be the queers must be yeah dude i'm telling you it's not gonna last dude you know what that is fucking men bro dude men that's are men absolutely fucking that's wanting to such big energy men are it's such, such big energy bitches, dude. i'll tell bro. you right now it's, it's it actually a is thing that he doesn't have to worry about that because 100 percent. it is a lot of men who are like they're wasting you know, their energy who are like look where your man's going like can you keep up yada 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 and i'm like <laughs> wow right mate if that's dude. you fuck you yeah, you're dude. a dickhead it blows no, you know what fucking we don't even need to say that to them because they're already fucking bums yeah, yeah but I like, just want to reaffirm it. It, it. it is in a position where my <laughs> wife, by the way, by the way, you just embrace it. Like my wife's like, look at all these yeah. people who, my wife goes, you know, it's a want to be you hour. It's like, hey, look at yeah. these people who want to be you. Yeah. Look at these people exactly. who want to be you. Dude, talk about a, like, yeah, a wife, yeah. bro. Dude, my wife she is flips it on you. fucking amazing, bro. <laughs> She's Dude. like, hey, look at all these guys that want to be you. All the guys hitting on her, you're like, yeah, exactly. My holy wife's fuck. Instead, wife's of, instead of being like half the generation Dude. around right now, like, oh, I could get so much more attention from this guy or that guy. She's 100%. like, no, no, me, bro. I want to be you. She's like, like hey, all this negative, her. all this negative fucking energy that the world's trying to put at my my man. Guess what? I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it power. Hey, babe, look it. Oh, so look true. how great you are. And by the way, dude, all these people my, want what you have. My wife. So what you just did. My wife 100% did. There was a point where, so 
to end off, I know we're we're long, but this is a fucking great episode. We are long. It was a long one, but <laughs> with with my yeah, we are goddamn near. But anyway, coming into it, dude. When when I got out of the military and I was finding success in the Marine Corps, right? Or I'm sorry, in in real estate, and I made the 150k deal and I made mm-hmm. all this money. I told my wife, I said, we're going to Sacramento because that's where our roots are, right? We're gonna go move to Sac. I'm getting out in four months. You're gonna go buy a home. We're gonna go buy it, yada, yada, yada. My wife moved to Sacramento, bought a house, found a job, solidified herself there, not even a minute away from both of our families. I was continuing to network, of course. I ended up grinding here. Savage. I, I ended up, are you peeing again? No, I keep. I'm making sure these cameras are running, bro. I'm like, this is the best episode. I'm like, I need somebody behind those cameras full time. I keep man. grabbing him. I'm like, I don't see a red dot. I don't see a red dot. <laughs> so we ended up grinding, right? And then identifying that my, I literally was like, wait, Riverside County, where I live, right? Mm-hmm. It's like, this is where I should be. Like, I just the way that your KPIs, you start pulling things. I'm sorry, I'm getting Fallbrook deals. I'm sorry, getting San Clemente. I'm sorry, getting San Bernardino. I'm like, wait. Why would I recreate my market when I'm doing this? Mm -hmm. So I called my wife up and literally it was three days before I got out of the military to move. We had our U-Haul everything to go to Sacramento. I called my wife and I said, you're gonna move back down here, sell the house, quit your job, you're coming here. And she was like, what the fuck, dude, right? Like I set (laughs) everything up and I said, Psych, oh, you know, like, <laughs> psych. She, and then she told me, and the best thing that my, wom- my woman did was like, I'm gonna do everything that you say, but you're gonna put me in three positions, right? In a year, we're gonna have a house that I can raise kids in. I'm gonna have another car so you can stop borrowing my goddamn car, Indeed. right? We're gonna have over $100,000 in our savings because right now I could be around my entire family and take care of our family and you can be put in a position that's comfortable. And if you don't want comfortable, I want you to be more than comfortable, which mm-hmm. means that we can have that much money. I did that in six months. Fuck dude. yeah. I did that in six months. Right. Give me that kind of woman. Brother, <laughs> and my years. wife, my wife, and you know, you were there. And my wife was like, done. Like, it was such a great ultimatum. She is literally the textbook definition of the woman you want to bring home to your family. Yeah. Love and that. She came on down, and, and since then, it's been where we're at, man. And I mean, we, we've met her, and yeah, I will say, even I from that. the like Legend. few experiences that I've had meeting her, it's like it's what you say about her, you know. Appreciate that. And man. I think it's just, dude. And I mean, that's what I want. That's what I want. That's I'm in a relationship right now, and you know, she's like it, it, the only reason I'm in a relationship is because she's like that in a sense. Like it's that's. going that direction. And dude, it just gets me excited, bro. It's like you it just- It is the best thing ever, and they need to hold you accountable. And you know you know what though? You are such a giver. That's what we are. When you're when you're traditional, you're a giver. Mm-hmm. My The only way I see my wife happy is when I can give her things, right? Because we yeah. that's what we want to do. Yeah. I want to give Let you things. Let me eat. Things. Yeah, no, here's, a fucking, here's a $5,000 ring. Let me give ring. you this. Yeah, here's the, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Open up, you know, yeah. like, no, like, you know, diamond earrings or house or travel. Or whatever, mm-hmm. but you love providing. Like yeah. you fucking love that's it. Hundred percent. You do, and so when they, when they expect it, and they hold you, because that's the only person that's that's gonna hold you accountable. When they do, and you do it, and they're like, "Look at you." I'm like, "Look at me, motherfucker." <laughs> yeah. Like, we're going to Hawaii. I'm going to Hawaii uh, in eight days. My wife, my daughter, who's eight nine months old. She's been in Disney five times. She's going to an all-inclusive resort in Hawaii for the first time with my wife. I'm flying my mother and my brother out to take care of her with me and my wife to go to Honolulu. And I'm like, look at what we fucking oh, done, dude. But you don't even. Look but at the, you know what the shit, best part though is you don't even. You don't need to say it. She's no. like, yeah, look my wife knows. What you've done. Look what you've done. And you're like, fuck you. Yeah. Dude, I swear to God. This is my wife's exact words. Swear to fucking God, my my woman knows it. I bought our flights, right? She came over there and she looks at me. and She goes, "You're a king." <laughs> Swear to God. And you know what? You call that fucking fruity? I at midnight when I'm validation. buying fucking That's flights validation. and I hear that and I'm like, 
I'm a goddamn I'm king. Like, Where's my next yeah. ovation? I'm like, dude, I'm telling you, it makes you That's work validation. so much harder. Bro, when my wife gets bro. out, you're a fucking king. And I'm you like, I am a goddamn king. Fuck you yeah. know what? That's what a queen does. You know why a queen 100%. can move so much? Is because they can provide such verbal reassurance anywhere on the board for mm. you. Dude. Oh my god, what a saying right there. Fuck I hell. can only move one time, but when my woman tells me that I got you anywhere on this goddamn chessboard, you can move so fucking viciously, dude. Yeah, towards bro. your goal. 100%. Consistently. Dude, you hit it spot on, bro. I can only move one space at a time, but when my queen that has access to the whole board tells me that I need to go in a direction or that I'm capable, not that I need to, that I'm capable of, dude. That's the beauty of a woman. She that sees one like she beauty sees, of a woman. Yeah. She yeah. sees that you want to go in this direction, and she says, "You know what? I'm going to use all my resources, and I'm going to empower you to move in that direction where you need to move." And yeah. that one move can make her win. It's the yeah. best. Speaking of one direction, are they? You know what? <laughs> <them? laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, I get that all the time. Bro, I was literally out last weekend. Hey, dude, Lewis, Lu hey, hold on. Lewis secretly sings. Brother, no, if hey, you I'll sing right now, I'll give you 100 bucks. I mean, if you sing, if you sing, 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 if you sing, I'll give you 100 dollars. Man has the voice of an angel. No, man has the voice of an angel. My mum is a singer. Shout out to my birthday. I know your mom's a singer. When we hung out the first time, I was like, yo, she has to be a savage, man. Absolutely. So shout out to Lewis's mom. I haven't heard you sing. I love to, though. It's great. I've heard her sing many times. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll do a karaoke night. But um, yeah, shout out my mom. Birthday today. The reason what? I'm here. I love you, Katie. What's your mom's name? Catherine. Catherine, happy, happy birthday. birthday. What? Your wife's called Cat. My wife is Cat. What's her? Is it? Is it her, Catherine uh, as well? K no, Katrina. Katrina. Katrina is yeah. my mom's stage name. I don't know. There's something there. Yeah. That's but amazing, man. Just before we finish. You mentioned your wife's like, we need to be comfortable. Yeah. To get comfortable, what did you have to do? Become uncomfortable. God damn, mm. become uncomfortable. Being comfortable with being uncomfortable. You got to put fuel yep. on the fire. You got to burn, you got you to be able to burn everything you think is, you know, what you want to put yourself in front of. Burn that goddamn house down because that foundation is all that matters. And build, Hell yeah. it, build it back up correctly. Build it back bro. up correctly, man. New build, motherfucker. New build. New construction, baby. New construction. Hey. New construction. Previous, you know, old. You can still, you know, you can turn an older build into a good house, but for you yourself. Can, yeah. Are you talking about mills? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about this Arkansas property. I'm like, <laughs> oh yeah, me the, too, me the, too. The, yeah, yeah, the, the sure. surrounding properties are new builds, but this 1950, <laughs> we can still get to 230 plus everything over. Trust. No, but I had um, I had a best friend that basically said that like we kind of um, or he told me once he was like, it's so crazy that with the people you're most comfortable with, you're not willing to be uncomfortable. It's like the people that you're close, most people, the people you're closest with typically, it's like you say things that keep each other happy. It's like, no, bro, I want to surround myself with people that make me uncomfortable. God, better, man. It's like, bro, this this, this guy, the, Ugh, the other dude, day, I hate that. bro, the other day, we're literally right here in front of this, uh, it's not a mirror, but the reflection on the door, he's like, I'm standing, I have a, I naturally have a wide back. But I'm not working out recently. Man's yeah. been grinding in the gym. I'm standing, you know, in front of him. <laughs> I'm like, I still, we have the same back width, but I'm like, dude, you're fucking, my arms are Twix. Yeah. I'm like, your arms are massive. I'm like, I need to get in the gym. I'm like, what am I doing? You know? And I don't want to be around fuckers that have arms the same size as me. Yeah. I want to be around fuckers that have arms bigger than me. Dude, so not adult or so not kid appropriate, but I had somebody who told me the same thing when it came down to it. I was like, I want it. How do I figure out growth? And he said, stop hanging around people that suck your dick and start hanging around people that, that tickle your balls. Because the thing is, <laughs> when, you come, when you come into it and they're just tickling your balls, what do you want? What, what do you want? Like, what do I need to do? And they go, you need to do more. Like, yeah, you I want, want this? You want this? Yeah. How do so I get what my do, dick What do you do? You do whatever the fuck they tell you to do. Yeah. <laughs> so you do more. You do more. Dude. And I was like, dude. That is the best advice I've actually ever heard, man. <laughs> that like, stop number, being around yeah. people that are like, you know what, gawk. No, fuck you, man. Like, they're <laughs> just over here. They're going here like this. They're like, wait, come on. You work for it, brother. Tickle to my balls, yeah. Tickle the right balls. down, tickle my balls. Tickle the balls. <laughs> <laughs> when you do That's new hires, say, tombs, will you though. tickle my yeah. balls? <laughs> <laughs> do you want... Uh, <laughs> <too. laughs> <laughs> so, basically, <laughs> if you got this far... Mm. Be tickle around. my balls. Yeah. <laughs> Get your balls tickled. Get your balls Trust. tickled. Trust. 
And if you're a woman, no, get the clitty rubbed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's a good note to end things God on. Damn right, Trevor, man. dude. Appreciate you coming oh, on, baby. my brother. You appreciate guys. you. My dog. Appreciate you guys no, this so is much, episode man. one of 25 because oh, honestly, dude, I would love I, that. I, th- and th- this is, I think when we started the podcast, the vision that we had for it was conversations like this. Mm. And I'm just so, honestly so happy. Apologies, I had to get up a few times. I hope you know. Brother, you're totally good. One time was for the bathroom. The rest of the times was to check the cameras <laughs> <laughs> because I have never, while we're recording, felt so like, this better like there's no way that there's some type of technical difficulty yes because honestly like we've i love the value that you provided to our Thank audience you, and i mean the value that you've brought to us man like i i genuinely feel like i'm leaving this conversation having not only grown in terms of what i know about business but what i know about life and i said it at the beginning but something i really like you like about you is how much you value family and your core like moral compass thank you honestly man i think that's something that every time i see you stands out to me and the fact that every time i see you i hear about praise about your wife that speak volumes to me about who you are as a person so you know i'm excited to continue to see you grow continue to see your community grow and to get a get to be a part of your community brother truly brother your input Truly, man, man is all the output i need you guys invited me over here in this place in your fucking amazing office is <laughs> more than anything i'd ever asked for to be able to bring my friends over here and just be able to provide a great conversation and create great criticism and just funness throughout what we need is going to elevate other people to do the same and if i could, if we can make one to three to five other people just get off their damn ass and do 100% what uh, what they're called to do then I am I am just blessed to be here. You're amazing, man. I Big appreciate up. you, dude. Thank no, you guys so much. I appreciate you, brother. Well, thank you guys for joining the Mid-20s pod. It was a great time here with Trevor Ehing. Louis Simon. Louis Fisk. <laughs> I mean, this man at the beginning of every video says my name with such a Spanish yeah. name. Yeah. I can't even say my name like that. I'm like, how do I say it? Louis Fisk. I need to say it in a very American way. Fisk. Louis Fisk. Say it one more time. And... Jesse Rickerin. <laughs> there you go. Thank you guys for watching. No. Comment, subscribe, like. Uh, let us know what you guys think. Give us some feedback. We're always looking to grow. Hope you guys have a great rest of your night. Peace.